Hey there, hi there, ho there. It's me, Bear, Gen X GM. It is the Four Color Cafe Special Edition Sunday morning, powered by coffee. And joining me, as always, is Brian and Cody. Say hello, gentlemen, please. Hello. Howdy. Now, the reason we're doing this on a Sunday morning, bright and early, is because these two fine gentlemen, Mr. Kevin Sambida and Sean Robertson, have needed to have it at a time when they aren't asleep, when, which is when we normally run this show on a Wednesday night. So clearly, we, of course, we're going to break time and space for these good gentlemen. So gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. We're super happy to be here. Thank you. The face works better in radio because the voice can pretend to sound good while the, the face is just like, <clears throat> so, you know, so we'll see how this works out for him. <laughs> Sunday mornings are my great thing. So we got a lot of people here. We got 14 people awake on a Sunday morning hanging out in the chat. That is great. The diehards. That's, well, no, it just shows <laughs> the response that uh, Palladium is currently uh, experiencing with the online YouTube gaming community. It's, it's pretty intense, um, the amount of Palladium love we've been seeing ever since we started talking to you guys and, and associating with you guys usually over on Legion of Myth and what have you. Uh, it's been a big, big thing. Even if someone said this morning, they say, Kevin, is that Kevin from Palladium Books? And I'm like, yes, it is. And he's like, oh, my God, the first game I ever bought was, and then, you know, off to the race as we go. <laughs> so, so I think this is a very, very, very common occurrence for a lot of people. Um, and I think that's a great thing. Uh, it's a really cool thing. So how are you two doing this morning? How's your Sunday going? Good. Yeah, we, good. we're having a good one. We, uh, we, 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 we did work a little extra this weekend. We went to the Great Lakes Comic Con yesterday, which is Ooh. about 45 minutes away or so. Um, <clears throat> there was uh, three of the, the, the core crew from Mirage Studios are there. Jim Lawson, Dan Berger, and Steve Levine. And uh, I'd never met any of them. I think, Kev, you'd met... Yeah, I'd met all of them actually at one point or another okay. many many years ago, like in a nineteen <clears throat> ninety two, ninety five. Yeah, I'm at that age where that doesn't sound like that long ago, but then I do the math and go, "Oh God, I'm old." So I feel. Oh, like I know. But you know, so I, yeah, because Jim Lawson also did a lot of art, not in just, just the Turtles um, RPG books, but also for Riffs as well, which is where I saw a bunch of his mm. stuff, and then not. Uh, Burger or Levine, they didn't do anything. No, for, uh, no. else for Palladium. Yeah, they're just Mirage Studio guys. <coughs> just, I mean, they're, they're all doing and, tribute yeah. art for the new books. So, thank you, Malachi. Thank uh, you so much, Malachi. Now, but, guys, let's yeah, talk. Let's so, look. All right, look. you've done this circle of people. You have done everybody's show. This you're finally on mine after this long run of doing everybody else's, which I understand by the way. Um, so. I don't want to just spend all morning going over stuff we've already gone over a dozen times with Legion of Myth or on Brian's show or what have you. I want to make sure we, 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 one of the things I like to do with the Four Color Cafe is make it a real conversation and not an interview. Sure, sure, more. absolutely. And by the way, Kevin's got a really good interview series going with uh, the Glitter Boys right now. So yeah, yeah I've been seeing about that here, and yeah, they're all trying to you know get get the backstory. Yeah, that that's been fun because you know it's. Let's face it, I'm an old guy and uh, been around since the 80s, really the infancy of role playing. And Fair. our focus has been with the Glitter Boys has been on the early days of, of Palladium books. And that's been fun. It's been fun thinking about, you know, where my head was at back then and why I did certain things with my roles. And it's been it's been really fun. Nice. Now, Cody and Brian, jump in any time with any questions you have. Uh, for people in the chat, like Malachi did, you want to throw a couple of bucks at a super chat, we'll ask your question right away. Otherwise, we're just going to sort of bounce our way through and feel it all out. We've, we've secured the gentleman for a two-hour window. We're going to abuse them for two hours straight and then release them back into the wild, preferably tagged so we can monitor where they go. But <laughs> well, our address is on Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. Now I'm going to start with my first question. I've been running Palladium Fantasy 2E for a while. I've run about three or four sessions now. Um, yes, I'm already house ruling it because I know the rule of Kevin has always been, hey, whatever works at your table, do it and have a good time, which is something I really appreciate about the way you design games and the way you think. I think that's a really good thing. We've wound up in arguments. We've wound up with people saying, no. It says this, and this is the rule, and if you go to the fact, and I'm like, I don't care what the fact says, because it's my table, blah, 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 blah. But when are we going to see a third 
Palladium fantasy book. I'm just going to ask it directly. I'm not gonna You're talking about third edition, like a core book. Like, like an updated, relayed out, represented, kind of what you're doing with TMNT, but for the fantasy game. Because the world needs it, Kevin. I knew this question. With all the nonsense going on with the 5e stuff right now, and the Dwatsi and the crazy and the woo-woo, we need you. So when are we going to get it? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we don't, we don't we, have We an, do know, but we can't We don't have an official say. public release date for anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Hey Brian, it's going to be a show over anything. again. <laughs> no, but no, I, I actually I think this is very different from Modifius. Um, what he what he's referencing is we had a couple of guys on, and at the very end, I'm like, oh, what do you guys have coming up? Anything you can tell us about? No, no, nothing we can tell you about. And then literally like two days later, hey, by the way, here's this new book. Oh, by the way, next week, here's this new book. And it's like, okay. <laughs> Anyways, no, so, no, that's why I explained to Brian. You have to deal with the fact that Paramount will put release dates on them because it's a Star Trek property and stuff like that. So we have to give them a little bit of leeway. You two, no leeway. You it, guys, it, it is tougher. It is tougher when you don't own the property and you need to go through the proper channels and you don't want to preempt a press release. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, so I mean, that was similar thing. We were fit to be tied. We wanted to tell people about the turtles. Oh my god! But <laughs> uh, but at the same time, we hadn't actually signed the contract because they're uh you know just some just some important stuff that needed to be hammered out and we everybody on both sides had full confidence we had a contract you know what i mean um and so we were actually moving forward with a lot of things but you know we had to wait until o friday october the 13th to announce it the day we signed the contract we yeah. we, we put out the yeah. you know the press release so um that can be tough and so i don't you know i i, I respect any other publishers especially ones that are doing I mean, they're, you know, Palladium's in a different position than, say, Modifius. <clears throat> our, our, you know, we have a whole bevy of our own art IPs. Someone like Modifius, if they take a wrong step, that because they're they're most they're virtually all IPs, right? Yeah. And so, um, same with with Free League has a ton of IPs, and you you uh, you do something like that, and you could lose a lot. Uh, you could lose a lot of rights really and quickly. And you're dealing with Paramount. Right, and Paramount CBS or whatever it is now, Viacom CBS, Paramount, or Bob's Dog and Three Hats, or whoever owns Star Trek currently, <laughs> are renowned for their Star Trek tetchiness. You know what I mean? They're renowned for it with Star Trek. As they should be. You know, yeah. it's a multi-bajillion dollar brand yeah. uh, that spans generations and will continue to. Um, yeah. And I think the, um, the same thing, I mean, well, and, you know, uh, well, you can read about some of the stuff that happened with Evil Genius and um, Rebel Moon. Yeah. So um, there's some, I mean, go and research it out there, but uh, apparently oh, yeah. there, at least part of the argument there, uh, there was a court case was that some information was put out to um, a, a game convention that wasn't supposed to be released yet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, and I know people in the just graphic design industry um, who um, I know somebody, he was working on um, uh, movie posters and mm -hmm. he, I don't know if he showed a friend or he, somehow it it got leaked that he had showed someone some, some preview image or he shared it on his social media. He may not even realize, you know what I mean? And he was immediately fired. Yeah. Um, and now he went on to live a happy, successful life, you know, but <laughs> he learned a tough lesson. Yeah. He rebounded quickly, yeah. but he learned a tough lesson. Um, so anyways, you know, but all but, that yeah. said, all that said, we, we, we're really excited about the future right now. The yeah. main things we've got coming out is we'd have, if you want to grab that, Kev, we do have Yen, Yen Sloth Jungles um, revised and expanded. And it is really expanded because Kevin was like, how are we going to put this is going to be like a 300 page book with all the stuff that he and John Klinkle had worked on and added to the original material. Yeah. Um, and so there's going to be now a Yen Sloth Expedition. Yep. Um, which, which I'm working is, on right Kevin's now. Kevin's working on right now. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, It's really cool. Um, and I, he even likes my ideas. It's crazy. Um, sometimes <laughs> I suggest something random. He's like, I'm going to go with that. Or I'm going to, I'm going to take that and tweak it a little. So that's always fun working together that way. What can I say? He's got good ideas. I know it's hard to believe, but <clears throat> yeah, I, I've, I've been on a lot of podcasts with him. I'm right there with you, Kevin. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but I, the, the main thing I want to say about Palladium fantasy, I guess we could, should say at this juncture is just like we're, just now, I mean, up until a few months ago, uh, people were using the Insloth Jungle First Editions. Yeah. So everything that we're going to be doing in the future, um, 
as we do eventually, we will be doing updated versions of different books. And the thing you guys are the first people to ask. A lot of people really love the the things that we're doing with the Redux edition. Not just the art and the color and the hardcover, but also the rules clarifications and updated <laughs> terms and things like that. Um, but anything we do in the future will always be backwards compatible. So you can still yeah. use all the same yeah. material. So we don't have a timeline or anything like that that we, we can talk about or anything like I'm that. Just gonna, I got your email, so I'm going to just bombard you. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start a whole campaign. You know? I'll do, I'll I do can, a whole... I uh, just block. <laughs> what's, that, what's, that, uh, what's that thing where they go and they get people to sign up online for the petition? What's that thing called? Um, I don't know, anyway, I'll just get something going. We'll just okay. and what, what does that do? <laughs> I, I, I annoy you. That's what that does. That annoys you. Can tell me, fifty thousand people want to know about this, and I'll be like, <gasps> "Well, you I, know what? If fifty thousand people want to know that you're when that's coming, I think that might be a little fire under someone's ass in this." No, we already know how popular this stuff oh, is. Yeah. We're paddling as fast okay. as we can, so it's crazy. Like, well, that's, that's the thing is, you know, we, Palladium unfortunately has a history of um, our announce. You know, we announce something, and then you know three, five years later, you know, people are still waiting for it. So one of the things that, you know, Sean and I decided early on when he came on board is to follow the policy of a lot of other companies, which is to not announce anything until yeah. we absolutely know it's freaking done. It's going to the printer. <coughs> yeah, the and even then sometimes, you know, with, with printing, you know, during the pandemic, sometimes it's insane. Time frames change, you know, and it's yeah. not, it's not, it has nothing to do with us, you know, yeah. but, um, and, uh, you know, a lot of that's outside of our control, honestly. Um, you know, and then sometimes life happens. You know, the original writer, you know, they have a baby or, you know, they get sick or they lose their, their other job. And all of a sudden, you know, they don't have time to work on stuff. And now it's like, am I taking it over? Is Sean taking it over? Well, and what are we going to do? And then that delays it by months, maybe years. Yeah. I mean, there's books that, you know, and there's some stuff that's been officially canceled for years. That's why, yeah. by the way, if you haven't checked it out on the platingbooks.com, we do have a project status page where you can go and look at all the projects that have ever been announced. Um, I think we need to update it with a couple of things that have come out recently. Um, we've been all hands on. Of, uh, Besides of us doing production, we have, uh, you know, Wayne is, you know, been really focused on the oh, getting the pledge manager up and running. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, but, yeah, that's then that's a great page. And there's some stuff that well, the other thing is, you know, Kevin, it's in a, you know, in some issue of the Rifter or some place he announced, you know, 15 years ago, this project was canceled and people don't know. Um, you know, and, <clears throat> and sorry, you know, just that's the way it is. And when you see stuff on that canceled, uh, we also listed helpfully the officially canceled date or time frame. <laughs> so just so you know, uh, just for your edification. But, um, the, uh, the thing is we really do want to make sure that, uh, we focus on and we keep the fans focused on, you know, what's, what's the next couple of things yeah. in the pipeline. Um, because all it does is lead to frustration. If, yeah. You know, because sometimes, like, for instance, uh, with Mechanoid Space, which was canceled, um, there was a, a great writer who had some ideas. And then when he went to go put pen to paper, he just didn't have – it just stopped flowing. It did, he, he wasn't able to keep uh, moving forward with it. And that was – so that ended up being, you know, no one else was available to write it. So that canceled the project, you know. So there's things like that that happen too. It's not it's not because of any ill will. Sometimes people get sick, or their or wife they have a baby, you know, or or anything. Uh, and and I mean, or, or their wife is you know sick and dying, and yeah. they go to take care of them. We don't talk about stuff like that, yeah. right? But um, we we try and be you know respectful of everyone else's privacy. Uh, now let's look. Let, let's move it away from this struggle session that it suddenly turned into. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just trying to put it out there. No, 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 you know, okay. Kevin doesn't talk about that. A lot of other places positive. might, but so we we positive. Law Dog says for four ninety nine. Were you guys born awesome, or did you have to work hard to become so badass? <laughs> Thanks for everything you do. Love you both. Love Palladium. So, were you born awesome, or did you have to work at it? It was a combination, I think, of the two. <laughs> pretty <laughs> awesome, and then you know you have to work on honing that. You're right. That's, uh... <laughs> uh, all right, Cody, you got any questions for the gentleman? Uh, yeah, well, I want to point out that they didn't say they're not working on Palladium Fantasy 3rd Edition, so that's good news. I'm happy to hear that because I'm also a fan of uh, Palladium Fantasy, and that ranks up high on my favorite Palladium games and game that, uh, like Bear, I am running currently too. So I would be really excited for another edition of Palladium Fantasy. I did want to ask, though, like as far as Palladium Fantasy, I, I never really thought about it or anything but what is the popularity of like palladium fantasy right now as far as you guys see in sales oh, it's, it's 
probably, I mean, not counting TMNT because it's not actually out yet again, yeah. but right. well, I would say it's it's number two. I mean, historically, okay. Plenty yeah. of Fantasy and Heroes Unlimited jockey for the number two and three. They're always really close. And depending on, is... on what new releases, and, and yeah, Riffs is number one. Right. Uh, it right. always has been. Um, and, and I just want to state that Palladium Fantasy is, is my personal favorite game. I mean, it, it has tons of sentimentality. I It's what launched my company, uh, really. And um, it's the game that I, I love to play the most. Uh, Rifts is the game I love to write the most because it's you can write anything and go wild with it and have a blast. Yeah. Not that you can't with Palladium Fantasy, but, you know, it's a different level, different scale. And uh, so, yeah, we, we definitely um, want to support Palladium Fantasy and, and all of our lines. And we are. <laughs> well, yeah. the in Slop Jungles, right? I mean, right yeah. there. Massive Palladium Fantasy support right there in one move. Can we ask a rules question? Just because this has been a, a wrestling contention point between us and everybody in the world right now. Can we ask yeah. one rules question? Just one. Just one. You can ask. Okay. <clears throat> It's Can good. you answer a rules question? Then? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We have to know what the question is. <laughs> All right. Max, Leo, and I are currently wrestling. We're at the mat. We've decided that this is our bone of contention between the two of us. I say Palladium Fantasy clearly says you get two actions plus one extra for your martial art. If you take boxing, maximum four. He says, no, sir. The riff's fact and everything says you get two plus two plus a fifth one for five. I disagree. He disagrees. We're both citing chapter and verse at each other as to where we think we're right. Can can we impose for perhaps a an inspirational ruling or a do what you do best or something here, gentlemen? Well, yeah. I mean, as always, you know, whichever way you think works best for your group, that's the way. <laughs> What'd you expect? That. <laughs> Fair. Actually, you know what. I'm going to, I'm going to bring, since we're doing rules questions, I'm uh -oh. going to bring up another one. Um, Sorry. Uh, Perry. Is it an unlimited number of parries for care for enemies that you can see, or is it based on the number of attacks that you have? Like you can parry an equivalent number of attacks that you have. And there's it, it, another point of contention. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's unlimited. Okay. Oh, like boy. if someone is is punching or swinging at you, you can you can parry. If you know it's coming, you you can parry it. If you can see it, you can you can well you can try to parry it. Whether you succeed or not depends on you know the roll of the dice and your bonuses. But okay, unlimited. Now, see, see, Law Dog says this, which is hilarious. Which is he says it's five. It was updated in the Bangalore wastelands to come into alignment with the Rifts combat system. Has remained so ever since. Yeah, I don't have that. So oh. I'm <laughs> it's a great book, by the way. I'm sure it is, but I'm just running off the basic two E rule book, right? So it clearly says two. It says one, and now you have two. And I'm like, okay, see. So you're saying play. So you're saying parries are unlimited. Hey, Cody, we're we gonna change that rule, or should we just keep doing it the way we're doing it? Uh, I mean, as always, I'll just keep running the game the way I run it. Oh shit! Yeah. Sure. Right. You know, there was a writer. Uh, it was really, really. Like he was there at the beginning and he said something. He said something about, like, you know, do the game the way you want. I think his name was Sembita or something. Or some, <laughs> some beetle. I think it was some beetle, was his name. He was like, never heard of him. He said, do what you want. And I thought that was a really good thing. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Sam Beta, you know. And Sam Beta, yeah. Up. Sam Beta. Yeah, he's a good guy. I, I like that. <laughs> like good stuff. I do right, have I mean, a, uh, a philosophical question about SDC. Sure, um, sure. It's actually been a while since I played Palladium. I, I'm a long time Palladium guy. Like I, I started playing Palladium when I first got into gaming in the '90s, and uh, but it's been a long time since I played Palladium. And back in the day, I didn't really think about all this stuff as much because you know we we just played the game and didn't think about it too much. But now I'm a little bit older, played a lot more games, and since I started running Palladium again, uh, it got me thinking about SDC. And SDC is it's always seemed to me is kind of like exhaustion or bumps bruises and you know the extra you know like you describe in the book kind of the john wayne fisticuffs where he he can take a punch and just keep going but what i noticed is the the rate of healing for sdc is fairly slow and it's and i always imagined it to come back pretty quick why did you make it so slow if it's kind of this abstract kind of buffer for your hit points just to kind of make it easy that you know that way it's on par with hit points 
Mm -hmm. and and you know people don't have to you know think about it uh, yeah. a lot you know i i just i love the idea i was a boxing fan in in the 80s yeah. kevin long hooked me up and it got me hooked down to boxing and it was the era where there were a lot of great boxers tommy hearns and uh you know um Mike Tyson and, and all these guys, you know, even George Foreman was still rocking and rolling and, he was. you know, and that's sort of the thing you see, these guys are all buff, you know, someone hits, I don't know about you gentlemen, you may be, you know, Hercules junior, but you know, someone, so, some guy who's a professional boxer hits me in the gut. I'm, I'm bending over and I'm can't breathe and he's going to beat the crap out of me because I can barely move where, you know, I could hit this guy three times in the gut and he's just going to grin and say, I'm going to kick your butt boy. And <laughs> you know, it's because they're so well conditioned. And I just, I really liked that aspect. Yeah. Um, I know some people in the early days didn't care for SDC, but I, I, I liked it a lot. And uh, you know, versus, you know, hit points or direct to hit points. And that gives, <laughs> you know, things that do damage direct to hit points more, or impact yeah. and or if you and, start losing hit points when when you, yeah when you start losing hit points you know uh oh you know i it, hopefully it makes it feel a bit more uh immediate and life-threatening and and one thing i'll add on to that too is that um different games have different hit point and sdc recovery rates right and yeah. the relationship between them so i think that just the just the the played system is the same core system but there's a lot of these <clears throat> we you know it's not called out Hey, this is a difference from other Palladium games. It's just presented as a, a, a as a whole, and yeah. so sometimes that's harder to pick up on um, compared to you know maybe like say some other systems like say Savage Worlds where it's explicitly listed as this is a variant rule or something. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I'll I, you know that's just two different approaches. Uh, but you, you know those are things that are interesting to go and, and make a comparison and say like okay, if I start playing with this game, let me take a close look at. At this healing or, or this rule and, and see if there are is something that's been modified because you know again perfect example pairing energy blasts and heroes unlimited right the fact that prowl is just higher in ninja turtles because you're all ninjas so stuff like that yep and that's why you know play with whatever rule that, that really works you know I, sure. in my mind a lot of this stuff is kind of evolving so if i get a what i think is a cool new idea i might introduce it in in this game or in this mm -hmm. source book and then, you know, whether you use it or not, it's not like, oh, my God, all these years I've been playing like this and it should have been like that. No, it's it's whatever, you know, works for you. Well, yeah. So now, I was one of those people that didn't agree with the two tiers of hit point SDC, not from you, but in games in general. For me, it was the first time I really encountered it was in the D20 Star Wars game. And oh. it made vitality versus hit points, and it made no sense to me. You get hit. Oh, my God, I got hit. But no, you didn't get hit. It went by your head. Well, then why am I taking damage? What the hell's going on? Like, it was just it was so difficult. And then I read your little thing using the John Wayne explanation. And I was like, I get that. Then it clicked right away. Like, I get that. That makes perfect sense. And sometimes I think it's going to come down to the presentation of the rule in the narrative text that is going to really help someone get it. And you struck gold on that one. It was a hole in one. Like, once I read it, I was like, yep, completely understand SDC. I am not against SDC. And I've used it vividly against my players. And my own character I'm playing in Cody's game is an SDC monster. Like, he no, could yeah. just take a beating. So I spent the entire session we played last time. These guys are getting almost killed by one shots because they're not, you know, as tough. And this guy's just walking through the fight, you know, taking these SDC hits, but not one hit point of damage, you know. So in my mind, he's tired. He's bruised. He's a bit battered, but he ain't broken. You know what yep, I mean? Right. Like that's, exactly. that's right. Yep. And I love that. That really clicked for me. So I, I, I really appreciate that you did that. And I've actually turned the corner on it because of your game, sir. So well It's funny that you mentioned that, though, because, like, I never had a problem with, like, you know, the vitality, right, in, in the old Star yeah. Wars uh, D20 RPG. I think partially because I was already used to seeing SDC as glancing exactly. blows and grazes and stuff yeah. like that so you roll with the hit but we're not yeah rolling with the punch but you know what i mean where the character cinematically just kind of gets grazed or, or something like that or it hits their armor but gives them a bruise or whatever it yeah. is well you know what i used to do for a living sean you know <laughs> but, you know i mean i was i I've taken a few hits in my life and i understand the whole point of just, you know taking that shot on the side and keep mm -hmm. going you know what i mean yep. which is very different than the oh i popped my knee out 
mm, that's hit point damage, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's a different beast. You know what I mean? <coughs> yeah. Therefore, I also like the injury rules that uh, Cody, I think, pointed out to me uh, a week or so ago that I didn't, because love of God, love your game, love your book, but Jesus, please, please, Jesus, please, <laughs> Lord in heaven, please, at least when you do update it, update the layout, please. But that's a side note. Oh, the, uh, the layout? Yeah, like just where things are and how rules can. Oh, we're working. We're working really hard on that. Um, actually, you know, it's it's one of these things that's really interesting, and and I don't want to you know, say anything negative, no, but, no, no, you know, no, about anybody. But you know, when the transition to digital, Kevin was no longer hand laying out a yes. lot of different things, um, and so that's made a big difference in the the presentation of a lot of books. And we we've been going back to uh, basics a lot, like with the Insloth Jungles. You'll notice. A lot of updates to the layout. A lot of people mentioned that um, for Titan Robotics. So it is something that's important to me and Kevin. And <clears throat> Apparently, I have to buy this book now. Do you hear this, Brian? I got to buy this book because he's telling me it's my dreams coming true slowly in front of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> here's why. Here's why. Yeah. He's doing, all this, he's doing all these updates with uh, TMNT, but I don't care about TMNT. It's not my bag. Uh, bag of it's a, uh, a a rear index. What? what? <laughs> that's that's not a palladium thing. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> All so, right, yeah. Max finally showed up, and uh, he's there. He goes, "Good morning. Just woke up. When did the special guests arrive? I see Kevin and Sean, and yeah, you're hilarious. Thanks for your five bucks." <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, Max, the rule on number of attacks. Kevin said it officially. Do what you want to do, but on the auto parry, everyone gets to parry. He said you can parry everything. So apparently, we're both wrong and both right at the same time. So there you go. <laughs> Monday morning go thing from Kevin for you. Uh, okay, Brian, ask a question or pick one of the questions that we haven't gotten to for that are non super chats. Um, okay, real quick, I'm gonna ask a non super chat question. Um, just because I didn't find it in the project status, um, haunted tech. Oh, yeah, haunted tech. I forgot about that one. <laughs> Yeah, that's. Uh... In other words, there's nothing to see here, folks. That well, book doesn't exist. <laughs> no, I mean it doesn't because uh, it hasn't been written yet. I, I had some cool ideas for it, and you're going to see that. I'm not sure if it's going to come out as haunted tech, or get incorporated in a different way. Um, but yeah, but... we we're actually talking about that. That's why yeah. that's not listed there. It's, it's. I mean, it's something we're really. It's a really cool thing. It's an idea, but we're going to maybe do something else. <laughs> well, it's, you know, or might it might end up as a part of another. Of something bigger. Or, or you know, a different name on the on the top. You know what yeah, I mean? Sure. Like, it, there might be a bigger idea above it that it's then a part of, if that makes sense. Okay, cool. So then. Um, <coughs> it's I not actually, really canceled. It's more like it's been uh, subsumed into yeah. a, a, a more grand project yeah. in the future. Because Kevin never makes something a more grand project. Ever. 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 <laughs> keep it small. Sean, this yin sloth thing. <laughs> a couple weeks. It's easy. I'm just reviewing some material. You know what? Two books later. <laughs> so, um, so I'm actually gonna I'm gonna at like kind of take uh Cody's Cody's approach and ask a little bit more of a philosophical question. Um, so you brought up Star Wars D20, which um I am actually planning on running a game of that. I realize it's not palladium, but whatever. Um, I'm also still planning on a ninjas and super. Do you play non palladium games? Yeah. I do. I do. Gotcha. I'm walking off. <laughs> no, there's a there's a there's I'm a, with a you. no, there's a long Go story beer. behind that. But um, anyways, but I've I've been looking at the at the Galactic Campaign Guide, which is sort of like a GM's book, and it's it was kind of interesting because there was a whole section about house rules. And hey, be aware, there's going to be house rules, and everybody should be on the same table as far as what the house rules kind of are. And then listening to some of Kevin's answers earlier, where we're like, "Here's a question," and Sean, Kevin's just like, "Yeah, no, just, just, just do what, do what you want, do what you think is right." It seems like very lately, Star Wars answer. What? It's a very Star Wars answer. Do, it, <laughs> do what you feel is right, of course. <laughs> Fair, but my, but more my point is, it seems like games from when we were all younger, or from. Um, you know, even as early as 20 years ago, there was more of that mentality of, hey, here's a rule set, you know, kind of do what you're going to do. Why do you think it's changed more recently where, no, here are the rules. This is what you must do. And you can't really make those house rules. We actually talk about this a lot. Yeah, it's an easy answer. Um, I think 
<clears throat> people are so much more i think most people start their gaming lives with card games board games video games and they're all very hard and fast rules there's no leeway and so when they get to role-playing games they expect everything to be there for them <coughs> explained and clear and you know i think they have that mentality of yeah that that's kind of cool but what's the official rule we right. need the official rule right and, and well, which we've even asked. And, then, <laughs> and i don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that no. it's just a different expectation yep. and you know that's that that's in a lot of, and it, the funny thing is is some of these people like me and you we've been playing games for 30 years but now it, i because i noticed this when i was working on riffs for savage worlds um the new edition of the rules um <clears throat> there's a lot with the savage world system um you know it's very similar to Palladium in that there's a lot of different things that can vary or be switched up depending on the setting that you're playing in or what you want to do for a specific campaign now it's it's they call it setting rules and it's more blocked out in their core book um and then you can introduce them in a new setting so like i introduced a uh, blood and guts rule and in, into savage rifts for the second edition but what i found was really interesting is is most people were like diehard gonna play it with whatever got published in that book that was recommended right if so I, there was a list of the recommended setting rules and then the specific ones for savage rifts <clears throat> and and i realized uh, this is really odd because most of the fans a lot of them are previous riffs play palladium riffs you know they started with palladium games riffs and so but they want this they wanted this you know, you know so i think there's a little bit more of like uh you know run it how you feel in that community because they a lot of them come from palladium and that has that ethos but the, the other thing is you could take a look at this around the other way because when kevin was writing palladium fantasy you know that was there weren't a lot of role-playing games out and there weren't a lot of games that when he wrote mechanoids that was like you know so <laughs> out of its time and um when he wrote heroes unlimited it was one of the very first you know superhero rpgs right so the thing that you, that you want to think about too is is now you can't even keep track of how many role-playing games are out there let alone and board games it's out of control right so <clears throat> i think what's happening is is earlier on it was like oh i can have this experience if i play with this gm because or you know because he run, he likes to run real dark gritty fantasy or this one it's more of a high adventure or this one we just kick in the door we kill the monster we take the loot <clears throat> you know we go to the bar whatever right and that's all dnd &D, right um but now i think people they have there's so many different choices out there they're like okay well what's what's the experience this explicit experience of this game not this game master this game right and so i think that's a little different um it just because partially but also because the evolution of the actual market environment as yeah. well yeah. um anyways. now law dog for 499 because you know brian handles the non-paid questions i handle the paid questions and cody just looks pretty so that's how we do this now <laughs> um for 49 he says at what point when writing riffs did you step back to your save itself and say holy poop it's gonna be awesome <laughs> that was kevin long wasn't it um so i I thought pretty early on it was going to be awesome, especially as I hammered out the magic and ley lines, and because um, I, I had worked on on riffs for like three and a half years before it saw publication, and I wasn't real. Ha I had a bunch of ideas, but they were kind of fragmented. And once I got the theme of human augmentation and the riffs and magic, and, and that really came together when uh, Randy McCall turned in um, Beyond the Supernatural. And I really ran with the whole concept of ley lines and, <clears throat> um, you know, where, where two or more ley lines cross. It's a nexus point and the magic energy is much higher. And my brain just like while I was working on uh, um, BTS, I was, you know, my head was already in riffs. And I'm like, this is it. This is where it's really going to jive. And then, you know, when you work on a three-year project, I've, I've heard animators say this too, because the typical animated movie takes about three three and a half years and their their point is after three and a half years you can't you can't tell anything you can't tell if it's good or bad uh or if it's going to be a hit and um 
that's where I was at. I, 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 I thought it was pretty epic. I thought it was pretty good. In my mind, it was going to be my magnum opus, my Star Wars. But I sent it to the printer, and I'm like, I don't know, man. You think it's going to be good? I, I mean, you think people will like it? Maybe it's too different. Maybe there's too much. I don't know. And and I'm like, oh, man, you know, we're, we're printing 10,000 copies or 20,000, I think, uh, initially. Maybe that's too much. What am I thinking? And Kevin Long was like, Kev, it's epic. It's the best thing you've ever written. People are going to love it. And I'm like, you don't know that. And he's like, I do know that. And he was absolutely right. Thank you, Kevin Long. And, uh, you know, we sold out the initial press run in, in three weeks. It was one of those things where I was like, man, Ninja Turtles was our first mega hit where we sold out 10,000 copies in three months. And I said, man, if it sells like, like TMNT, I'll be thrilled. And uh, instead of three months, it was three weeks. And I, I, I knew for sure it was a hit at Gen Con where we introduced it uh, because we hadn't even shipped the distributors yet. It, it, we, we actually went and picked up copies on the way from our printer on the way to Gen Con. And um, I don't know, it took like 500 copies and uh, we sold out by like Saturday. And we're like, holy crap. And then we had people coming up. I heard about this Rifts game. I need a copy. And I'm like, uh. And then, it, you know, sold out so quick. You know, Sean always tells the story of how he didn't get uh, to, like, third, third printing. printing. And I, I, I was like, oh, I thought I got a really early copy, Kev. Because I, you know, I was a kid. And it's, you know, it was the 90s. There was no internets. And you just go to the game store when this thing's supposed to come out kind of thing. And. And I was like, I had a hard time getting a copy. I remember we had to go back a couple of times. And Kevin was like, actually, third printing, that's really early. <laughs> because yeah, it's like it just first, kept selling out so yeah, fast. It's like the first yeah. six months. Because, uh, yeah, the first printing, like I said, sold out in three weeks. Uh, we printed 20,000 copies for the second printing. That sold out in, like, two months. Uh, the third I, printing, I, you know, came out. And, you know, that thing started to slow down a little bit. But, I mean, we, we've sold, like, 400,000 copies. Oh, unbelievable. In, in the life of, of, the, just rule of book. the rule book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, yeah we had uh, first books that would sell 100,000 copies. You know, it was, my it was group was cool. playing Torg at the time, and I went to my FLGS to get something for Torg because I was going, oh, I'll pick up the rules and read them since I'm playing the damn game. And the guy's like, have you heard of this? And he held up riffs. I'm like, what's this? Oh, it's uh, Palladium. They do Robotech, right? And he's like, hey, it's really cool. And I'm like, eh, price is right. All right, I'll buy that instead of Torg. And then I read the book in like, you know, a couple of days, and then I was like, guys, we have to play this, and they're like, no. I'm like, no, no, we really have to play this. Like, no, we're playing Torg. I'm like, all right, fine. All right. Riffs. And I don't know Riffs. whatever happened to that book, but yeah. Riffs it's funny because actually... Shane Hensley loved... Oh, sorry, Cody. No, no, sorry. I didn't mean to jump in, but Riffs uh, was actually the first role-playing game I heard about before I even heard, knew what a role-playing game was. Hmm. Oh, wow. The reason I was made aware of it is because comic books, and you guys used to print the ads yeah. in the comic books, which, by the way, like those ads still stand when i think palladium games i still think of those ads in the comic books but i remember cool. seeing that like a couple years before i got into gaming uh like the ads and i was like what is this this looks awesome and then i got into gaming and the first time i went to the local game store this little cd hole in the wall comic and game store that used to be here in town uh called a and b tells and anybody that's local here knows about a and b tells the, it was a it was a cool store it was just this misfit like heavy metal punk rock like all these misfit kids used to hang out there or whatever. <laughs> and the first thing I saw walking in the store was this rack of riffs books in front of the counter. And the lady's like, you know, she was talking to me and, and you know, whatever. And she's like, uh, she's like, I think you'd really like this. And I was like, oh, that's that game I saw in the comic book. And um, I didn't pick it up that day, but it wasn't too long after that, I, you know, I picked it up secondhand at like a, the, the used uh, bookstore. And I still have that copy over there sitting on the bookshelf, but yeah, that was my first introduction to role playing games before I knew what a role playing game was. Cool. Yeah, I officially That's went and bought this about a month ago, and uh, it's, it's a great like, book, isn't it? Just, just the back section alone. Yep. Just, just this, this part here with all yep. the the fun history i mean come on man this well that's what we're really excited about doing with the tmnt by the way with the redux edition yeah. you know people are i think they're i mean it's going to be like that on steroids right we've got like uh, 28 30 artists um now that have pinup pages for the two books and the remember the behind the scenes remembrance sections and a, mo a lot of them are writing and other people are writing tributes as well written tributes um 
but uh, yeah, no, for, for me, it was interesting. Um, cause I, I, it, it, you know, similar to you, uh, actually I had a similar experience, but it was with the battle tech compendium. I was oh, at, yeah. a, I was oh. just at the mall with my dad and I saw it and I was like, this is super cool. Can we get it? And I didn't realize it wasn't a full game. It was a full game sort of, but it didn't have like the maps and the, right. the, the pieces. And I ended up getting, then went and bought the battle tech, you know, game of armored combat. And then that got me into gaming, I guess. Um, I got really competitive and we would go to tournaments and like me and my buddies were these like, you know, 13, 14 year old kids. And we're like, we would form a lance to fight other adults. <laughs> you know, it was funny, but, uh, and that's how, and then eventually I, I, I ran into turtles and then I got, you know, I traded some, some battle tech stuff for this role playing game. Um, but it's also interesting with riffs. You mentioned Torg, uh, Shane Hensley was really big into Torg. Um, yeah. and, uh, he redesigned the new Torg Eternity. And then my buddy John Watson uh, did a lot of work on Torg Eternity. And so I actually wrote some stuff for the recent Pan Pacifica uh, mm. Torg, uh, the adventure book uh, that comes with it. So I used to live, you know, I would speak Mandarin. I used to live overseas in Taiwan and I was a China analyst. And so I, I wrote a fun Chinese, uh, you know, based adventure history based adventure so nice uh, yeah but yeah check that out if you ever get a chance um Absolutely. but uh but no yeah um yeah next question <laughs> yeah, let's, let's keep moving uh, brian think, go ahead and hit something <laughs> yeah i think we've got a good one from uh from the chat king eric the greatest of all says i'm new to palladium fantasy did tsr ever have an issue with palladium fantasy no not at all okay little known fact kevin did a lot of so early on with TSR, they licensed the, um, the adventure supplements um, to Judges Guild, yeah. and Kevin did a bunch of early Judges Guild art yeah. for um, Dungeons and Dragons adventures. That's because he got started as an artist. So that's one of those things that is actually really neat. Kevin goes before he even did playing fantasy, he goes back into uh, D &D. The, the D and D lore yeah. and annals. So, <laughs> <laughs> but so, so there was never, I, I, I mean, that is one of those things like the, especially in the early days, you know, uh, the, like you hear about TSR being a lot more aggressive. So, but they weren't really trying to shut down other, you know, fantasy games coming out. I, I, I can't speak to others, but I, I'm not aware of them trying to shut anybody down ever. Um, they certainly never, never approached me. All right. So, so you know, and we started using, you know, TSR artists, you know, I, I, I was advertising in Dragon Magazine a, a ton along with Marvel Comics and Keith Parkinson. Um, it wouldn't say that's kind of a funny story because oh, the the the, uh, the person in charge of the advertising department department was was Mary Parkinson, and uh, we became pretty friendly. And you know, I'm one of their major advertisers, and and at some point we're we're just ch sort of chit chatting. And of course, I loved Keith Parkinson's art, but for some reason. I never made the connection that they were related in any way. <laughs> and at some point, you know, I, I'm ranting and raving about Keith. She goes, thank you. And I'm like, what do you mean? Thank you. She's like, well, he's my husband. And I'm like, <laughs> he's your husband. Can you introduce <laughs> me? <laughs> so, I mean, we started to use, you know, Keith Parkinson <laughs> a lot. And you know, I used Larry Elmore for a piece and we used a couple other TSR guys and, you know, having my roots being an artist, I mean, I just gravitate towards artists and appreciate their work. So, you know, it's uh, it, it was cool. Okay. Um, yeah. No, that that's that's definitely one of those those kind of things that you just don't think about. Um, sometimes the where, you know, like I think I've said it before. A lot of the the gaming industry is very uh interconnected we'll say <laughs> as a as a nice way to put it um so uh cody <laughs> any questions well sort of uh i kind of know the answer to this but i just wanted to know more about it and um so i i kind of i kind of get the feeling and you've kind of hinted and alluded to it in other interviews i've watched with you kevin that the palladium system was kind of your house rules of playing other games right Yes, is that correct? So, was that really the evolution of like the Palladium system, and where did where did that all begin when you were when you started, you know, developing your own system? 
Yeah, a a a absolutely. So um, I started playing D&D, &D and uh, I met Eric Woodjack and a bunch of other folks in the uh, Wayne State University area. And we started a, a gaming club that we call the Detroit Gaming Center. So I was in a unique position. You guys mentioned Game Masters earlier, where I could see all these different styles of game mastering and different people's approaches and what they thought was the right way to run something or the wrong way or just their personal style. For example, there's this one guy who he could take any written adventure, no matter how bad it was, and turn it into a masterpiece. And I approached him at one point and said, I want you to do some writing for me. You know, write, write, you know, everyone rants and raves that you run some of the greatest adventures known to man. And he's like, I, I can't write you something new. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I can't write you something new. I can take other people's stuff, but I, I, I can't, I can't write my own material, which was amazing to me. Uh, and then everyone back then, because, you know, RPGs were so new and a lot of the rules were clunky. Everyone was creating house rules. Um, and so a lot of the Palladium game system and certainly Palladium Fantasy is almost a direct response to pain points I found in D&D um, &D and other games at the time, RuneQuest, Chivalry and Sorcery, um, that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, and the things I, I thought I wanted to see, because I mean, I was a total novice to role playing. I didn't know jack about it, you know, and so one of the things that just really captivated me was the whole concept of role playing it's right. in my mind it was all about the character and the story and one of the things i immediately found lacking was and you see it and it's prevalent in all of our books to this very day is <clears throat> i want strong characters strong villains strong worlds and, and the worlds of a lot of role-playing games, especially D&D, &D, didn't make sense to me because they were very much like a video game. So your group comes in, kicks in a door, fights, you know, 15 bad guys, ransacks the freaking room. And yet somehow the people right next door in the next room didn't hear anything, didn't come to investigate. Um, it just didn't make sense to me. It didn't, that, that sense of world building, there was no like real ecology uh there was no real thought to the environment in in logical stories it was all just kicking this loot room kill loot kicking the next door kill loot you know etc and there you know some variation with traps and you know puzzles and that kind of stuff but you know and i, wa I wanted more i wanted story i wanted characters um and then you know i was running 26 guys on a regular basis so I, I needed game rules that were fast and, and made sense and i'm not really a math guy so some of the D, D stuff didn't make sense to me where okay my, my my armor rating is like minus five and that's good shouldn't it be like higher like i have an armor rating of 15 that's good um and you know and then you had to do charts and compare <laughs> monsters and all this stuff and you know, I hated the fact that, you know, first level characters were, were just wimps, um, you know. And so, I mean, most of my guys started the game at third level because they could actually do something, um, you know. So, I mean, I did all of that stuff. Uh, and then, you know, my sense of history, my sense of stories. I mean, I was an avid reader of novels and history and comic books. Uh, and then I watched tons of TV and, you know, movies. And I was just very much into stories. And I wanted to put that into role-playing games because yeah. that's what I loved. It's We're assuming a role. It's a cooperative story. When we're done, we remember this, this game session as if it was an epic movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had some, you know, played a role in it. And you played a role in it. And you played a role in it. And you played a role in it. We all develop the story you know there's some you know that's what i love about role playing there'll be some moments where maybe you know cody's character does something that that saves everyone's lives or comes up with something you know they're all about to walk into a trap and brian says wait a minute this seems odd don't you think and now all of a sudden the group's like oh yeah yeah what what are we thinking this this could be a trap duh you know and it's it's great it's just it's just i 
Sorry, I love role playing. No, no, do not apologize. <laughs> in the right place. I mean, this is the society of role playing gamers. After all, this is what we're about. Um, I, I go to the I go to the mat every time. People say, you know, your world. You're not writing a novel. Well, if my world isn't real enough for you to get lost in it, then my world's not worth having. At, at, well, point. yeah, I mean, that's you know. Now I know that in your game, particularly, you're playing. You're using the Palladium Fantasy rules, but not the Palladium Fantasy setting. Correct. That's correct. That's um, cool. Yeah. No. Listen. I. I I'm, I'm, I'm. I don't like using published worlds. Uh, I, I. Though I have told Sean repeatedly, if there was a primary <laughs> to the Palladium world, I might. You know, look at it more. But you know, I don't have to. I don't want to buy ten books just to get an idea if I like the world there, Sean. But that all. I don't know. There's a few people that have put in there. I mean, I don't know. I've seen even the haters love the world, right? Even yeah, people are like, oh, I don't world, like the from system. what I've read of it. I, I, the world's amazing. I'm, you know what I want. We're not getting. We're, we've had. I'm just giving you a hard time. I, we all know that. Sleeper <laughs> hold, buddy. Sleeper <laughs> hold. This I'm putting you in. You're never getting out of it. Uh, all right. So here's the most important question of the day. Whose office are we in today? Today we're in Kevin's oh, office. Oh, my office. Yeah. Ah, there we go. So Sean's is what a broom closet with like cleaning supplies. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Good. good, good, good. <laughs> Where he belongs. When when Sean when Sean has 40 years of published material, he can he can get a bigger office. Jesus. Oh, maybe a little sooner. We'll see. Rough, <laughs> maybe. Damn, damn. <laughs> Mental note to self: Don't work for any company Brian runs. I'm just, um, saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, Kevin has a good reason to need a bigger office. That's all. Oh. <laughs> well, I came into an existing organization, you know. So uh, that too. that's that. But no, no, my I, my office isn't terrible. It's not a broom closet for sure. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, it's it's funny because Kevin already had the lights set up in here. And so, because we have some some diffuse lighting, and so we were like, "Yeah, let's just do it in your office. It's a little easier, um, and we can maneuver around. There's a little more room behind the desk the way he has it situated in his office." So, nice. and then there's, so there's the a giant question. turtle picture just framed <clears throat> perfectly. It is nice. It yeah, it is <laughs> nice. So. Here, here's just a really straightforward question because I'm, sure. I'm very curious about this. Where did the idea for the Christmas boxes come from? Um, that was that was me. I, I uh, <coughs> my my favorite holiday in the world is Halloween, and my second favorite, a very close second, is Christmas. This guy loves giving presents. And uh, well, I grew up poor and, and couldn't really do that. And uh, you know, thankfully, I was an artist, so I could make you know draw a piece of art or a Christmas card and give it to somebody. But sure. you know, when you're poor, you know, and it's funny when you know when you're a kid, you're like, what a cheat! You know, I'm just drawing a stupid card and giving it to grandma. And, uh, you know, when I grew up, I realized, oh, that's really precious, <laughs> you know, because of a one of a kind thing that took yeah. you know, the kid four hours to do. And um, at the time, it just felt like, Ugh, you know, I want to buy people real gifts and couldn't do that for, for a long, long time. And, you know, so once I got money uh, in a successful company, I, I, I do. I like to give out gifts. I, I you know, I like to show people I appreciate them, and um, so uh, and then you know I, I love our fans, and I thought you know this would be something cool, and I came up with the idea of how do I make this seem like a Christmas present, um, you know, and that was you know you give me a list of ten to fifteen things, and you're going to get like four or five of them, but you don't know what's yeah. in, it. and then you know I surprise people a little dumb dragon drawing or something that people now love and uh you know that dragon head drawing and um you know just people love it just in part of it you know i was a big comic book fan so i sat back and thought you know how would i feel if stan lee put you know not only signed my book but sometimes put in a little post-it note with a note or drew me a little <laughs> picture of something with with a note or you know merry christmas or you know keep your imagination burning bright. I would be on cloud nine for six months. Yeah. And, you know, not to put myself in the same bracket as, you know, a legend like Stan Lee, but, you know. I put him in that bracket. But you know, I would, too. Oh, no, you. I would, too. I, and I'm not, I, listen, no smoke up your ass, man. You are a dude, okay? You're just a dude, and you treat everybody the same. And I, I love this about you guys. Is like, I've talked to a lot of RPG publishers mm -hmm. since I started this channel two years ago, and I will not name names, but there are some I love talking to, and there are some. Well, that was nice having you on, and we'll not be repeating that yeah. anytime soon. 
Uh, but you guys, especially Sean first, and then when I got to meet you the second time, I was just like, these are dudes. These are guys, if we yep. met at Gen Con, we'd go have a bite, you know, and a pint, and just right. talk gaming for a couple hours. That's the guys I want to hang out with, because I come up in the film industry, and the people from the film industry that I remember to this day, the mm. ones of the best experiences I had, were the dudes, you know? Like, just the guys who hung out and talked shit, as opposed to the ones who were full of themselves. So you right. put yourself in that Stanley box, put yourself in that Jack Kirby box, put yourself in any box you want to be in, <laughs> just understand... You're just a dude to us, and that's what makes you such a cool guy. Man. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, there were two pivotal experiences when I was in my late teens, early 20s. And, and one was a really good one where Lynn Carter, he was a, mm. a writer, did science yeah. and fantasy, and he was at this little rinky-dink convention. And, you you, you know, it, it just, the con was basically a flop, but it was the first time con. I had like a whole 200 people show up. And yet Lynn Carter was there for, and I wasn't even a huge Lynn Carter fan. I mean, I liked his stuff. I especially liked his Conan stuff. But, um, you know, and this guy, he was like a total, like you said, a, a total guy, a total dude, where he was like, mm. we, we, we caught him coming out of an elevator, like like four of us. And we said, hey, we're up and coming writers, artists, you know, can we talk a little bit? He talked for us like four freaking hours. Yeah. The guy was amazing and humble and nice and grounded and down to earth. And I said, man, if I ever become a name, I want to be Lynn Carter. I want to be like him. I want to be there for people and, you know, help young up and coming artists, writers, and mm -hmm. just be a good guy. And then the other experience was sort of the opposite. Well, I happened to be, I was at a big comic book convention and there was a, a super hot artist of the day and his two asshole buddies and they were to and these these two kids come up and they're totally polite totally respectful they wait and, and they see them and, and i happen to see this because i'm talking to like two or three other friends and i'm just looking right across these guys are like six feet away i'm, I'm watching all of this and the kids don't say a word and you know they're there to see him because they got his comics and a poster he had done and you know they're waiting for him to sign it and they just chit chat, ignoring these kids for a good 25, 30 minutes. Yeah. And finally they get done talking <clears throat> and they're like, we're not worthy. Please. Can you, you know, sign our books? And they're like, sorry, kid, I'm going to lunch with my buddies. Wow. And they just walk away wow. and the kids were like shattered. Yep. And, and yep. even they were like, wow, what an asshole. Yep. And, you know, we walked over and said, look, everyone's not like this, that those guys are jerks. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry that happened to you kind of thing. And, um, and I'm like, I'm never going to do that to anybody. Yeah. Never. Yeah. I, I, something I want to throw in is it was interesting. Um, you know, I've, I haven't met Peter Laird. I met Kevin Eastman in a video call. Um, but it was so obvious that he was, he's, you know, he and Kevin get along really great. I mean, they're obviously old friends. Um, but uh, he was really cool. I just, I, I, I kept coming, okay, came away from that. And we had a great conversation and, and, and showed him all the stuff. He really liked all the color work and um, all the stuff we're doing and was so excited and just wanting to be a big part of the project. And then yesterday we go and we meet, you know, the rest of the, a bunch of the Mirage guys. Yeah. And it was the same thing. I just felt so comfortable with them. We were just chilling and hanging out and yeah. we didn't want, there was other fans and stuff we didn't want to take up too much of their time <coughs> but um but i mean they i went to them and i said because i'm really bad kevin's you know comic book collector and stuff he's good at, at collecting things i kind of still learning it but you know i got i got uh all of them to sign my tmnt and other strangers the original rpg you know nice and they said they they each one did us a, a turtle sketch yeah nice and, you know, it was just like, it was so cool. And yeah. I know that we could hang out with all of them, you know, for yeah. hours. Yeah. They were just really cool guys. Most of I think all of them had their wives there. Didn't yep. Yep. Yeah. It was just, and they, yeah. they talked about the way it was back in the studio. And it was so funny because it's a lot like how Kevin yeah. uh, runs yeah. Palladium and, and how collaborative it is between yeah. us running back and forth between each other's offices. You know, I'm primarily working on, you know, doing the turtle stuff. He's primarily, you know, working on like in sloth or, yeah. or coordinating with yeah. artists, you yeah. know, other important stuff, but the ideas go back and forth constantly. Right. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's really great. So anyways, I just thought I'd throw that out there that, 
it's what's one of the things we've noticed with, the, and it seems to have really influenced the turtle fandom mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of really positive ways too, um, similar to the Palladium fandom. Yeah, I, I think so. You know, I always <clears> say <throat> Palladium fans are, are are the greatest fans on the planet because they, they they really are. But I see a lot of parallels to Team and T fans, and, and I think yeah, Ke somehow Kevin Eastman and and me. We're, we're kind of in his group and my group, we're kind of cut from the same cloth where, you know, we're fans of what we do, you know, I mean, that medium, in his case, comic books and, and art and writing, and in my case, gaming, art and writing, well, as well as comics. It's a lot of crossover overlap. And, and yeah. you know, it's just, yeah, I, I just, I, I'm happy everyone loves my stuff. It means I'm doing a good job, right? <laughs> you know, but it doesn't mean I'm, I'm better than anybody else and I'm not God's gift. Um, you know, and I think Kevin Eastman is the same way. I, I, I saw him years ago at, at a San Diego comic con when he was still married to, to Julie Bell and, uh, uh, both of them were, were, or Julie Strand. Sorry. Yep. And, uh, and we all uh, wish we were married to Julie Bell. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Julie Strand. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know where that came from, but, uh, you know, and and he is just the most gracious, kind. Always has a, you know time for his fans, and and I try to be the same way. And um, it's it's just nice. It's nice to make people happy. You know, Anne it's, Hathaway said this so perfectly. She said that one minute it takes me to sign an autograph is a minute I'll forget. But for them, that's a story they're going to tell every Christmas. You know yep. what I mean? And it's like there it is. There it is, right there in that nutshell. Yep, and it really is. I see anyone who has any public sway or any public clout acting like an ass to their fans, that tells me everything I need to know about them as a person right there. Narcissist, self-absorbed, self-important. No thank you. You know what I mean? Just no thank you. No interest in spending yep. time with you. Yep. I, look, like you, I, I could sit here and rattle off names of people I've known and ooh, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is how do you treat the people who know you? You know, how do you treat the people that come to you and say, hey, Kevin, hey, Sean, or even Cody or Brian or even myself, whatever little level of, of popularity you're going to have, these people are making your world for you. They're yes. supporting what you do. Be nice. Yeah, you'd be nothing without them. Zero. Absolutely zero. So be kind. Be nice. Exactly. Oh, well, what are you going to do? All right. We got any other good questions, Brian? Uh, we have a couple, but I, I do want to make They're one not comment. Good. No, <laughs> no. I was gonna say I wanted to make one one comment. Like, like, so the the Christmas surprise boxes like are absolutely amazing, as you all probably noticed when my name kept showing up. Um, but I will I will admit I was a little disappointed when I took advantage of the the recent sale um, on all like the the after the bomb stuff. And I opened the box, and I'm looking at the books, and and, and none of them had signatures because I'd gotten oh, so used to seeing that. That is true. That spoiled. That spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that was that was just a funny observation, but it was still a great deal. So every I'm not day is Christmas for Brian. <laughs> <laughs> not every day. Um, sometimes I'm just irresponsible with the funds I have available. To me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> all By right. Way, so before you jump on, I do want to say I got my Christmas box. What an Herculean effort that was, and if it wasn't for the fans of the show, we would never have gotten it all the way up to Canada with that shipping cost, and it was fantastic. I chose not to wear the t-shirt today because I am firmly believe never wear the t-shirt of the band you're going to go see, right? So that's just, don't be that guy, but uh, <laughs> fantastic. Like, the signatures, everything was so much fun. Uh, you guys do a great thing. I'm going to do another one next year for sure. Well, that's Absolutely. the thing, fun. To me, role-playing is all about fun, and I like to have fun, and so I want to make it fun for people and make it special something unique and, and yeah. fun yeah yeah all well, right they, brian go for it and they absolutely are so uh per wants to know what was the ignition for kevin creating palladium's experience point system where good deeds increase level as a reward and not just well and i'm adding in because i'm thinking this is the implied subtext not just killing stuff <laughs> well i mean you know that's i, I Again, it's all about character and story. So I wanted you want to reward character, reward and story. people who yeah, <laughs> role playing know, play, and play play smart and and tell a story and you know it shouldn't all just be about killing. That's just so so limited. So and I will I will point out early D and D you also got XP for gold or the gold value of things. So I mean if you really think about it, 
it's murder and loot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the, the funny thing is, is, you know, a lot of these ideas, people are still figuring out that this creates, can create a toxic gaming environment, right? Like, look at what's happened with the D&D Adventurers League over the years. They've figured out a lot of these things are, I mean, it's, it's, it's basic, it's basic economic theory, you know, what you incentivize, you know, flourishes and that's what you get, right? And so the, you, when you incentivize these types of behaviors and game playing, you're not only I mean, you're incentivizing it. So, so even someone who may have been predisposed to be a heroic fantasy adventurer is now like, well, I'm all about the money and the loot and the gold and getting what's mine, right? And they realize that that can create a toxic, a recurring toxic environment. And still, Palladium's experience system, I think, is still the standout. I haven't seen enough. I mean, I've seen some really great ones that incentivize some really unique things, but I've never seen one that... Um, approaches it as much of a whole, holistically, yeah. as Palladium's does, and Palladium's hasn't changed since the beginning, right? So that's just, right. and, and not that we're op op opposed to change. I mean, we like sure. great ideas, and I love seeing people innovate things, yeah. but it's interesting to see, <clears throat> like, Palladium's experience system is was way ahead of its time, and is still, I think, one of the, the great things about the system, and it, again, if you have fans who grew up on, a, on that kind of an experience system, they might approach gaming a little differently than people who grew up on a, yeah. a murder loot. Yeah. And that's exactly system. right. I mean, I, I wanted to incentivize being a hero, doing heroic things. I saved the kid from these bad guys or from an ox cart that's run away because it's the right thing to do, not because, oh, we'll let the little brat get run over, shouldn't be playing in the street. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, where's the goal <laughs> game for me? You know, it, it just, yeah, you want it to be heroic adventure in my yeah. mind is there a reward not that there's a problem the playing bad guys i've had some <laughs> games where we just play you know anarchist or evil guys but inevitably those games don't end well <laughs> for how much XP do i get for the peasant uh, <laughs> pretty much what it boils down to your alignment system also is the absolute game changer i almost mentioned that as well yeah it is absolutely insane. Like I, I literally brought it over to my D and D games when I used to run D and D. I'm like, yeah, that's nice. When I, because you try and explain lawful good to a noobler who's never played the game before, you try and explain chaotic neutral, chaotic good. You see, you can do it, but it becomes this entire bloody afternoon. You know, well, it, it's, it's a philosophical it's, debate, and that's what it's based on. Is and there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that, but it's based on a cosmic type of alignment um, concept. Uh, which is fine, but if you want something that's more, because I remember one time I told Kevin, I said the same thing, you know, sorry, I'm a fan too, right? And um, I was just like, man, because I I, I, um, I declared a double major into uh, psychology when I was getting my uh, design and production degree um, after the military. Um, but uh, I realized the GI Bill wasn't going to be able to pay for it. So um, <laughs> I... <laughs> I canceled the major and just had, you know, um, you know, so a, a bunch of psychology and, and neuroscience classes. But um, one of the things I quickly realized as I, was, as I was reading this stuff, I was like, holy crap, the palladium, you know, alignment system or, we, you know, it's a lot more like a moral code. Yeah. But, but, you know, people have these natural moral codes or ways that they interact with society yeah. and those around them. And I was like, Kevin, this is fascinating. It, it, it matches the psychology text. And he's like, yeah, because I, I read that. And that's what I based it on was my research into human psychology and sociology. And I was <laughs> like, oh, well. <laughs> I want to say something to you guys. Recently, you uh, asked me about my heroic backer kid coming up, and then you gave me a shout out in your newsletter, and that blew me away. Blew me away. Like, I mean, because I mean, Absolutely. also at the end of the day, if we boil it down to the brass tacks of it all, I'm creating a competitive game to Heroes Unlimited, right? So to have uh, that, hang on, let me finish my point, Sean, because we've just. No, 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 no. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I stopped. That, I stopped. To have that attitude of no, no, we're not competitors. We're colleagues. We're all in this together. We're all doing what we do together was really, really cool. And as such, though he can't be with us today because he's preparing for his stuff, um, you've been shouting out Legion of Myth a lot as well in your stuff. <laughs> and uh, he wants you to know that he really appreciates that and he thanks you for that stuff. And this is what makes you good guys, just so you know. Just in case you're wondering, this is the stuff that makes you good guys, is that you don't 
have rock star bullshit going on. You have just, you're just cool guys. And I'm telling you, I told you this when I uh, sent you that one uh, review that you went and published the review in the newsletter, which killed me. Uh, what yeah. I said, I never thought in a million years 2024 would be the year I discover Palladium books as the thing I love doing. Many, many moons ago, six, seven months ago, uh, Mage's Musings, uh, which is another YouTube channel, great guy, Sean, hangs out here. Sometimes he's on our panel. He had said the reason why he plays AD&D 1E is because when you find the game you love, even with all its warts, you will love running that game. And that's what Palladium Fantasy has become for me. And it's really yeah. interesting because I have been on a, about a 15-year quest for a fantasy game that I don't fight. You know what I mean? Where right. I'm not fighting yeah. the game all the time to get it to work for my setting or to get it to... Because I firmly believe setting trumps rules always. So you guys delivered that. I literally was... You know, you, you ever have that thing where you fantasize, but if I could do the quantum leap where I go back in time to my younger self and what things would I do differently? Here, I, use this book instead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, I, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm meeting all those guys in 1985, we're going, we got to play d d we're going to play AD&D. I'd be like, well, actually, here, how about we play this instead? This is what we're going to play and hold up that first edition Palladium Fantasy game because you just made something special, but it comes from a point of love. It doesn't feel like it's business oriented. It doesn't feel like it's sales oriented. It doesn't feel like it's how can we capitalize on a market? It feels like we love these things and now we put them in a book and we want you to love them too. Yep. Then you talk to people, you can communicate with people, you draw in books, you sign things, you do stuff, you shout out people. Man, can I just bottle that and give it to everybody else in the RPG world so we can get all of this nonsense arguing and fighting gone and get back to a place where we're just a bunch of geeks hanging out together? Because, man. Yeah, no, I mean, we really we really do see it that way. I know Shane Hinsley, um, you know, says, uh, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, Kevin mm -hmm. says the same thing. <laughs> so I was surprised when I heard Kevin say the exact same kind of sentiments. And, um, you know, we both, I mean, I, 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 felt very lucky um very blessed to be able to be attached to riffs in any way shape or form for the first thing i did in the industry um working on savage riffs and uh and obviously it's led to a bunch of wonderful stuff and now being here at palladium um with kevin which i never i mean that's just like <clears throat> so um but yeah we want to shout out stuff and with john watson and i would joke around because we love to play riffs <laughs> together and he would you know he would start working on torg stuff and i never really played much torg um but it was it's it's like that you know people see it as these competitors but we don't see it that way so when he invited me to write some stuff on, i was like yeah i'll write on it you know and um <clears throat> i'm really excited right now the the science fiction companion for for uh oh yeah for uh yeah. you know pinnacle right now is is uh on kickstarter and uh i did a lot of writing on that like three years ago um <laughs> so um but uh, to make sure that it was going to jive with the new edition of Savage Rips and mm -hmm. uh, after the, the Suede, the Savage Worlds Adventure edition. So if, you, if you're excited, that has a, really, a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, one of the things that I you know, tried to put in there was some stuff about uh, how to run different genres of science fiction. Um, and it in, ended up influencing the other um, companion books. But no, we just love when there's cool ideas and we can share cool ideas and we can give other people cool ideas and we can shout out and boost the signal. You know, um, and that's I think that's just part of a healthy gaming environment. Right. Yes. And 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 all working together because, um, you know, <clears throat> when we talk about the science fiction companion or when Pinnacle talks to the, the you know, in their newsletter about our turtles Kickstarter, it doesn't it doesn't hurt them. Right. I mean, people can, you know, buy both. And most gamers do if they if they enjoy a game. Most gamers I know don't just own one game right yeah. <laughs> it's right. Game. yeah yeah and or you might just buy other stuff to check it out or or or, or see if there's something you might want to use as a house rule or or to uh you know to in inspire you for your campaign so anyway I, sorry i talked a lot there no, no, but, that's that's good um you know and and, <clears throat> and you know I, I think it's just human nature that when you really love something you tend to think it's the best and you tend to sometimes be little other companies that do the same thing and you know yeah i think you especially see that in comic books especially in the back in the day um i think people are a bit more open nowadays but you know you got to think about it. like whenever someone you know poo poos D, &D i'm like what are you talking about i said look role playing is very personal so maybe it's not your cup of tea but 
without D&D, there wouldn't be a gaming industry. You know, it's and, and it's the most popular RPG ever. So like what you like, like what you don't, but they're doing something right because people adore the damn thing. Well, and, and again, mm -hmm. maybe it's not for you, but it is for millions of other <laughs> gamers. So well, it's, yeah, it's okay. You know, and that's why I'm always a fan. Like when someone says, Oh, sorry, I, 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 I don't like your rules, but I love your world. So I'm putting GURPS or, you know, 5e or whatever. Um, and I'm like, that's great. I don't care. I mean, I'm glad you enjoy my world and you're, you're still playing my stuff. I'm still buying our I'm still books, inspiring you to do fun things with your friends. That's great. Yeah. I had to in, back in the nineties when I was running my Marvel games and I'd be like, I need a, I need a art of a, of a robot. They're going to fight this week. I'd be grabbing a palladium book and going flip, 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 flip. <laughs> that guy looks cool. Photocopy color, 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 color. And this is the guy you fight this week. And they'd be like, Oh, you know, it's like, Inspiration comes from all points. Exactly. Well, and, and just enjoy it. Uh, Michael Chad shouted you out for five bucks and said, thank you, gentlemen, for uplifting the hobby. Uh, and that is a true statement. Oh, it is very cool to see. Um, and then a bunch of other people. Brian, go ahead. Cody, please jump in. Cody, have no, some. Well, so I don't, I've just been enjoying uh, listening, really. I don't really. No, uh, you're becoming have... a spectator. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I, I did want to say, you know, that's one of the big things I've always respected about Palladium. Even before I heard you guys talk, uh, even back in the day, I could just tell that it was a product made with love by gamers for gamers. And to really hear it straight from, you know, Kevin and Sean's mouth that, you know, that's, you know, basically what I presumed it always was and is, is really awesome. And I've always been of the philosophy, I'd rather support somebody that likes me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's a lot of RPG sure. companies and game companies, and I'm not going to name names. We all know that, um, you know, don't, they don't, they don't give a shit about you. You know, they're, they're just, you know, they, they really don't. And um, so, you know, that's one of my main reasons why I always say, you know, I support Palladium. Not only is it a great game, not only is it cool stuff, but it's definitely, you know, a product of love that's, you know, and you can just tell. So, you know, I, I think that's a great thing what you guys are doing and everything you guys do is awesome. So, Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I, I felt weird. I remember I was, um, and it's always, this funny thing is everything I've worked on so far, it's always been a passion project for me, right? When I got to work on Rifts, I was so stoked. And then when I got to do the second edition of, of the rules for, Sa for Savage Rifts, I was just floored when I got here and I worked on um, Titan Robotics and, and you know, Co rebuilt the book co-wrote it you know um i was just i was just over the moon and then now working on the turtles redux edition uh i mean it's just it's, it's getting pretty big i don't know how we're gonna follow this one up but um <laughs> it's been it's that's the thing though is it really is true i mean kevin and i are both we're these are all passion projects for us and um you know the funny thing is we've had to learn to sometimes reel ourselves in a little bit because mm -hmm. we'll go too far um and and exhaust ourselves and that doesn't it's you know this is a it's a the writing rpgs writing books books in general that's a more of a, a marathon type skill than a sprint and sometimes you're sometimes you need to sprint but sometimes you're yeah. you're tempted to sprint because you you know you want to you want to make certain things happen but uh but yeah so anyways we it's been really great and we just love being a part of all of it yeah you know and, and it is a business <laughs> you know you, you have to make certain things based on business decisions but at the same time like, like a great example is the black white and red edition our, our original concept for that for turtles was that you know we would just reprint the original black and white art put in some spot reds for like the masks and and other things and uh and then jeremy caldwell couldn't quite get exactly what we we're talking and he sends in some samples and he's like grayscaling everything and putting in these this great lighting and reds and and we're all like yeah it was and fans are gonna they shit their pants when they <laughs> see it it's just and, and you know, the first thing, you know, Sean says is, well, geez, Kev, that's... It's a lot more expensive. It's a lot more expensive. To, and I'm to like, do the treatment that he's doing to each man. Because basically, you know, we're doing the color version, and now we end up doing a black and white version. Right. And, and we're paying for both. And I'm like, you know what, Sean? I don't care if it comes out of my own money. 
it's just too beautiful. The fans will go crazy over this. We need to do it. And Sean's like, absolutely, Kev. Yeah. So, um, so we're, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing, you know, like we just, we're getting as many of the tribute artists as we can involved with this. And it's been a lot of extra work. And I mean, it's not, I mean, maybe in the end, yes, people word of mouth is going to be like, great and more people will buy the book i mean that that is a, a that's a real potential but in the end is it really about whether um you know paying all these artists the all the time to coordinate the art um uh you know um production with them and then coordinating the approvals with with paramount is it worth it technically i mean i, I hope we at least break even right so yeah. um on that on that trail but that's the thing is but if you love it, it's a it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, you know, it, it, we don't want to. Obviously, we don't want to like hemorrhage money or something on on any project. Um, but uh, but sometimes it really co does come down to you know what the fans are going to love this. Let's just do it, right? You know, in in a, in a, a straight out corporate company where it's all about the money, they they would have said, you know, oh yeah, I would have rained if what, I was what, just a bean counter. I would have rained us in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, it's just. But we it's called we're, scope creep in project management. We're, we're, <laughs> we're fans too. And we want, we want to create something that people are going to cherish and love for the next 40 freaking years of yeah. TMNT and gaming. Yeah. So, and we approach all the books like that. We yeah. want, we want that to be something that you're going to be just like so many people are. I mean, I know a lot of y'all are part of this in the conversation. We get people, Oh, my, something happened in my collection. You know, fire, rain, wind, crazy ex girlfriend, whatever. Um, <laughs> and they, they, you know, but they're they're buying the books again because they just love them. And it's twenty years later, you know, and it's the same book. You yeah. know, but uh, you want it on your shelf. You need to go back and reread it because um, the quality's there. And um, not a lot of um, you know. It's not an easy thing for any any company to be able to say about their role playing game books if they're that beloved that many years later. I think that's something really special. So well, yeah, and that's that's another thing I've always really respected about Palladium uh, is that you you know it's the same game. It's it's the same thing. It's been around forever. Even though you guys continuously update it and revise it, I can still bring off the shelf, you know, the first edition TMNT, and it's still going to work with whatever today. You know, like right. and that's, that's that's awesome to me. That and there and there aren't many games. There's a few out there um, that have stuck to that philosophy, but there's not many that have that have been around that long. And I think that's there's something to be said said about that. Actually, at one time, funny enough, I thought that was a negative thing about Palladium. But as I've gotten older, I think it's a really positive thing, right? Because the more I see all these other games that have changed and evolved, and they're not really what I originally loved about that game when I got into it, right. Uh, it's become something else. It's not even the same thing anymore. It's yeah. become some other beast, but palladium really hasn't, you know, and I think that there's something to be said about that. And I think well, that's, and that's why Sean is here. Yeah. Because yeah. he's going to preserve that. He, he shares yeah. that same view. He, he has the same passion. He, he loves the stuff. And, you know, he's not just some bean counters coming in going, yeah, this is great, but you know, how can we monetize this even more? I mean, we do that, of course. We're a business. But, sure. I mean, <clears throat> without sacrificing the quality, without sac sac sacrificing our fan base. I mean, it's clear by what some companies do that they don't give a shit about the fans. It's all about the do re -mi. And, uh, yeah, we're just not built that way, and neither is he. And that's why he's the guy who's going to be taking over the company. Uh, you know, it's because he loves it as much as I do. And that that's a rare thing i mean to have those his skills as well so that's why he's here man <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> right. no but i was actually going to mention that because there's a lot of companies unfortunately where they change hands right the the, the ownership changes hands um and i mean you know um and sometimes that's great look at catalyst what they're doing with battletech amazing yeah, yeah. That they've yeah, been able to preserve more that. More often than not. But a lot of the, a lot of the original creatives are still part of that, right? And that's really great. But that's not always the case. Or, you know, someone else gets in charge and they, they want to, they're focused on different things, right? And so, um, you know, you, but that's a short-term strategy. You burn your fans when you put out bad books, right? You might, it might work for a Kickstarter or two or a few editions of something, but then the fans are going to wise up and, uh, 
yeah, that's that's definitely that's the thing is you know people can say oh well Palladium's behind on this or you know Kevin talked about this book ten years ago or whatever and um, <laughs> but the thing is is everything that comes out of Palladium is quality right and um, even the even the stuff that some people some people may not like and be like oh that wasn't that great a game it's dude that's someone else's like cult classic favorite game. Because I've met those guys too, and the, the, there is the quality for someone out there, right? Or if that's not your, you know, not everybody's bag is is zombie apocalypse or whatever, right? But for the people that really enjoy that, it's one of the best out there. So, anyways, you know, there's there's things like that that I think are really interesting to talk about. So, Two yeah. things: you guys are clearly special because both Beans and Misty have made an appearance on this show, which is a rare thing to happen to have both the cats one and oh one doing something. So that's you guys bringing that good energy. Uh, second, I'm going to ask. Now this is a, this is a slightly controversial question. This may have a reaction. I hope it's only asked clearly for just getting the answer that you know I want for my own personal bullshit. Um, what about third party licensing? Is that ever going to be a possibility with third party you licensing? Like, like I want, I want. Let's say I want to publish my setting using the Palladium rules, but I don't want you to own my IP, which is the current way. Oh, we've we've talked play to play people play. about that. Yeah, no. Um, there was when did we? That was uh, I put that out. We wrote about that in a. Uh, and a weekly update like a year and a half ago. There yeah. were a whole bunch of that. And we, yeah, we're, I mean, we're open to that. We're open okay. to that, whether it's licensing the Palladium system mm -hmm. or um, licensing a Palladium setting, like with Savage Riffs. Okay. But I mean, it's got to be someone who's, you know, serious and real. And, you know, we're going to want yeah. a royalty. And the other thing is, we also want to work with, um, and this is no, slight on people who are up and coming because I, I was there too and Kevin started that way but we do want to work with just because the licensing can take a lot of time yeah. it actually does take a lot of time right um, and contracts aren't cheap when you have decent lawyers um, and so and we want everybody to be protected fairly um, and so because of that one of the things that we have said to potential uh, people that we've talked to is um, you know, we only want to work with publishers that have a few titles under their belt sure. and have a track record, you know, because you could have a great writer and a great artist and stuff along for a project. If you're a new company, it doesn't it doesn't mean it's always going to necessarily gel. And that's, and that's we're not trying to be mean or anything like that. That's just kind of like just to preserve our time and our efforts. That's one of our, our, right, but our I'm, I mean, more something like what Savage Worlds does yep. or what other guys are doing where they've, they've created these community licenses where people can yep. basically pay a percentage of their profits, get the right to use. Your oh, you mean like an open, oh, open yeah, license. Like, not an open license so much as a community license. Like, no, we're not like, like swag. No, That's we're not cool. interested in anything like that. We want to really create and choose who uses our systems. Or well, fair. What bear? That's fair. I'm just hearing a lot of bing bang boom boom in the back. Oh, like, that's that's me. It's not morning, Kim. It's Kim. It's Kim. <laughs> yeah, his wife uh, bangs the pots and pans, and uh, you know when she's like lighting I, a candle in the North Tower. I, I've had we've had this discussion, and Kevin, you know, saw the the dark side or the double edged sword of the OGL a long time ago, okay. and we had people when you know certain things happened last year, for instance, um, yeah. that uh, people were suddenly they came to Kevin and they're like, oh. 20 years later, they're like, oh, you were right. I was wrong. Mm. And we're not talking nobodies. So uh, people who've you know worked at some level in this industry for a long time. Um, the other thing is, is, you know, and, and so to not, without getting into a big discussion or dive too deep on this, I mean, I, you know, correct me if you want to throw anything else in or, but uh, you know, it's it to us, it's, it's important to um, curate what mm -hmm. is available and to, to guarantee a certain level of quality because that's what Palladium is known for. Yeah. The other thing is, is though, <laughs> is that we have, if we, if you do work with us, just like people would say, well, why are these guys so nice to Pinnacle? Sean must be some spy. But in the end, it's really because we have similar values, our companies and company culture, and they are a, our licensee. And we want them to be successful, even though they and run it. They, they have a proven track record too. They're not a. Well, of, of course, they had a, a proven track record, right? And they do great stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, the same way, though, that's the the thing is that you know you 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 get lost in all the open stuff that's out there for D and D. I mean, it's just it's 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 mind numbing. Um, and at the same time, I can tell you if you get you know if you work with us and and you you're you're like whether you're licensing our rules or one of our settings you're going to have us 
putting your stuff out there and talking yeah. to the fans and getting you're going to be on the inside track then and that's something that don't that you know you can't say with with uh, an open licensing situation very much so yeah you're very correct on that without even talking about the what we with the the uh whether we think doing an open license for your game rules is a good idea or not that's a whole nother rabbit hole right no and i only brought it up because it is a common thing people ask no we get we get we get the question all the time and <laughs> yeah. i and it's not a bad question i asked kevin yeah. similar questions when when he asked me to join him at palladium we had a lot of discussions and um and that was after being with pinnacle for almost half a decade working on you know riffs for savage worlds type stuff um and and, and science fiction companion and writing for other companies um and so i uh um you know it's 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 you it's there's a lot of nuance to it and a lot of detail mm -hmm. but kevin's mm -hmm. made his i'm uh, sorry i'm talking for you kevin but no, you know, kevin, right? <laughs> <laughs> but kevin kevin really has a good reasoning behind all these different uh approaches and we've just we've we, we've kind of reviewed everything you know like especially yeah. on stuff like this um because we do take fan questions seriously so don't think that if we if we have a quick answer at a convention when you ask us because we get asked this question fairly frequently it's not that we haven't thought about it and put a lot of thought into you know and every time a fan asks us we kevin and i are both the same kind of guy we're gonna we're gonna think it over one more last time and see if they have any really you know, stunning arguments about it. But in general, that's our idea of how we want to deal with it in our approach. I don't know if you want to throw anything else in there. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we're, we're always re-examining what we do, how <coughs> we do things. Because, um, you know, we want to do things smart. We don't want to do things that the fans want. But, you know, I, I've throughout the history of Palladium, I've done things that are different than the rest of the industry. And, uh, you know, pretty much everything we do, there's a reason behind it. Uh, it's not just, oh, I thought I would do this, or it's just some whim. Um, you know, it, one, of, one of my sayings forever is 90% of everything is research. Mm. So we research things, analyze things, and we look outside our industry. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we talk to lawyers. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who know better than us on a lot of levels as well. So, Oh, no one would never not accuse you of marching to your own drum at palladium that's for <laughs> sure uh and it's a good beat that's the other thing we're all learning now and i like it I, it's snappy well <laughs> it's got a good beat i could dance to it. i gave it a 50 dick um i literally am this is gonna be a little bit of a fanboy moment uh I, I'm, I'm really honored that i'm getting to be a part of spreading this word now i'm really 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 love that i'm running palladium games online for people to watch and then the feedback from the community and just spreading this because i think we have spent the better part of a decade getting beaten as players by companies who just want money and it's been very disheartening for a lot of people which is why you see people going back to the old games so much because they can just play a lot of that. without being harassed or abused Whereas you guys have just been there the whole time going, have a seat at the table. Want a snack? You know what I mean? Like, and it's just it's really cool. And it's great to be a part of that. I never thought I would be a part of that in a million years. So I'm just really happy to be a part of it. And that's why I'm really happy to have you guys here today. And I'm going to stop being a fanboy and let Brian ask a question. All right. So speaking of Sean selling out the company to Pinnacle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, am, I you know i'm kidding money yeah <laughs> you know I, you know i'm kidding i just I, I i take jokes and i run them into the ground people it's he how really I really does uh, anyway so um actually a while back uh voice of one actually wanted to know in the official riffs timeline sure is everything from savage riffs going to become official or is it considered official um, oh. um yeah so people ask yeah this is a common question that's a really great question oh, the way kevin and i look at it is it's it's kind of like um you know parallel timelines um once savage rifts jumps off with uh the the books right in 109 pa um because after you know the because all the savage rifts books for any fans out there they're they're set in in mid 109 pa uh post-apocalyptic calendar um and and palladiums continue to move on past that so after those books are set that the timelines could diverge but in palladium rifts kevin really likes the tomorrow legion there is the tomorrow legion as of 109 pa right um and the foundations are a few years before that right yeah, whether um, you use them or not that's up to right you. 
Right. And uh, there's some notes about them and some different encounter tables and some different adventure setups. Um, and you'll probably see more about it. I mean, they're not a when you really think about it in the in the rift scheme of things, the small legions, a fairly small faction. Uh, that's like a sub faction of the cyber knights. Right. Um, so, you know, um, that's uh, but 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 yeah, it's uh, the riffs books um, for Savage Rifts. We worked really hard to make sure that as of 109 PA, all of it is correct. Um, so, and in fact, there's little places where we updated a map here or there, or yep. put more detail. Uh, Cause I would ask Kevin questions about, um, Hey, what about what happened to Fort Pinnacle um, during, uh, you know, the, uh, well, during, during the siege on Tolkien, there was this kind of like secondary or third tertiary front in in the texas freelands right and what you know what happened to the coalition base there um and you know we ended up talking about how that meant that baton rouge was going to be this way and and all this kind of stuff so um that's uh that's all that's all yeah, canon. We, yeah we, we consider it official yeah so right. same thing with we, we we kevin reviews everything so but i but like when we were working on the south with south america book um i was working on that really early on and i I brought and I had some ideas from some other writers and stuff and uh, but I put together this whole document because there's just so much um, because you know the South America one and two were set in like 102 103 PA yeah. and Savage Rifts is 109 and there was a lot of things that this is going to happen next and this could happen next and, and so I I put in quotes and and you know gave a whole rundown to Kevin and and he really liked it and and that's that so if you're if you're a, a big Rifts lore fan um, and you will see that those facts updated in future books from Palladium as well. Um, it's just that sometimes, like Savage Rifts, they're constantly churning on a really big scope. And so there's a lot of chances to update the corners and the edges and the in-between spaces, if that makes sense. Um, but it is all official, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, another question from James uh, Huddleston. Uh, I wish it were possible for you guys to say what your intent is for a virtual tabletop to run Palladium. Understanding secrecy and so on, but I have a bunch of guys using my generic rule set to play it on Foundry. Well, that's just, we're not going to talk about that. Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh. I, just, I just wasn't sure if it had been addressed previously because I... Well, I've we have no current, no current official plans for virtual tabletop support. Got it. Okay. Um, let's see. Hang think. on, hang on. Before we get pushed back on that, are we allowed to ask why, or is that a state secret we're keeping in a box? I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I'll just give you a high level generic answer. People get sure. frustrated. You know, people don't like certain answers, and it. We have our business reasons for why we're have the plans we have, and why we're not talking about certain things or talking about okay. certain. Yeah, perfect. That's yep. that's all we needed to hear. There are plans. They're after just we not all saw Tucker out. interview Putin and get nothing but grief for not putting pushback, I got to make sure I'm better than Tucker. At no, all. I mean we're we're happy to say <laughs> we're not going to answer the question, and yep. I know that frustrates people, but nothing wrong with that. Like though. this that's is fine. the way we have to. There's a certain type of way you have to deal with with uh, certain subjects, and we just can't make any comment on that right now. Hey, you got lawyers, man. I'm not going to push too hard. <laughs> So, does Rifts have a universe? We have, does, a lot. does the Rifts universe have a mirror universe where the Coalition are magic users and democratic, and Quebec is a demonic hellhole? So, I live in Quebec. It is a demonic. Isn't, hellhole. But this isn't the current timeline he's yeah. talking about, is it? Um, no. Uh, yeah. Universe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Alternate universe. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Well, it sounds like a fun campaign. Yeah. Yeah. I would say there is in your world. <laughs> well, and, and that, that was one of the things that Kevin and I really enjoyed when um, we got Matthew Clements's notes. Uh, or notes his manuscript right for um, Titan Robotics was there were a bunch of alternate timeline ideas that we decided that's a cool it's cool to kind of lay out what some because he played out a lot of the what would happen if Archie was discovered or if Titan Robotics was discovered or you know different secret parts of the secrets were discovered and so um, that's something that we think is really fun is alternate timelines and in that book if you go to that chapter I think it's five um, you know it, it lays out hey, you could run a whole campaign with this canon change, right? Or this canon change. And it could change your your Rifts campaign, or these things could result out of your players' actions. And here's how to handle it and what that would mean um, in a more comprehensive sense. You know, and that's the cool thing about Rifts. You can do whatever parallel universe you want to do. And that's great, especially if you've been running Rifts for 20 years and you're like, let's do a new campaign with something fresh. 
and fun. Um, yeah, and especially know. if you like bring in your original Rips characters into that world. I mean, talk about culture shock. Yeah, yeah. Are you fast forward you know, the timeline you know. a little bit? This is the result of your actions. And okay, um, I, and or I you have... could go through time and space. Yeah, <laughs> to an alternate dimension or a future or past. Yeah. Or, sorry, or I, I do have to address this. Just sorry, the Canadian in the room got to address this with KB, the other Canadian, talking to me right now. It's not that it's a hellhole. It's just we have these things called, well, you call them potholes. We call them hell mouths that eat your car. So you know we got to kind of take that in stride at all points in time. Just saying. <laughs> all right. So um, this is a question that I have, kind of on a uh, production side. So the Rifter has always been. All right, we're going to do a print run. And that's it. We're not going to reprint it. Okay. Right. Totally understand the nature of the, the 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 format. I get why you're not reprinting it. However, have you considered doing like a the Rifter presents for and collect like all of the ninjas and super spies articles, and then bam, you get an extra ninjas and super spies book, and you don't quote unquote have to do any extra work for it. I mean, we, we can, we've considered a lot of things. Um, we've also considered, you know, making them available as print on demands through one <laughs> uh, source or another. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, part of it is, you know, implementing things and, you know, deciding what's the, the best course of action. Gee, do we do that or do we really push hard on getting this Ninja Turtles license, you know, I mean, because there's only so much time in the day, right? Yeah. Um, but th those are great questions. Now, one of the things I will say is um, certain Rifter articles um, really informed and, you know, uh, Titan Robotics, for instance. Um, and so, and that now the material doesn't look the same when, you know, Kevin or I go in to do our pass on it, right? Um, it, there's a lot of changes and updates that will often happen. Um, but Creature Feature was uh, similar to that. I mean, Creature Feature was based on a lot of monsters from yeah. various Rifter articles, plus new ones that Kevin and Matt Clements wrote. Um, and uh, Steve? Steve. Steve does. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, there's a, there, that, 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 that is already kind of happening um, in an organic way. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's well because of the way that we look at, at things, we want to make sure that we put really high-quality stuff out there. Um, and I'm not trying to dig on anything in the river. Yeah. I think a lot of it's awesome. Um, but, uh, there, you know, it, we, we don't want to just slap dash a collection together either. Right. No. And I, and I totally understand that. Like part of the, part of the impetus for, for my question was like, so nin ninjas and super spies, everyone here knows that I, I just love the concept in general, big James Bond fan. Um, but like you've got the regular ninjas and super spies, and then you have the hardcover, which then has, a couple so, of Rifter articles to give you, hey, here are a lot of ways to expand it. And sure. so now I have two copies of Ninjas and Super Spies <laughs> instead of Ninjas and Super Spies and a, and a source book collecting that material. So that was right. just an idea that I had because there is, like you said, there is really good stuff in there. Right. That, you know. Maybe yeah, how that gets highlighted way. can be tough, right? Because well, yeah. the other thing is, is the nature of a Rifter article is some of it's easy to put in because it integrates well with the core. Other times, a Rifter article might go in some other direction that um, you know is more is easier or more difficult to to you know dovetail into what's already existent, right? So it just really depends on the the Rifter material, I think, as well. But we yeah. do like to do it when we can. So, anyway, just just a thought. Anyone else? <laughs> no, we appreciate it. No, we appreciate it. It's a, it's we, a cool we idea. We love getting information, you know, people making suggestions because, you know, maybe we've thought about it. Maybe we haven't. Maybe we need to, you know, reconsider it. Well, and that's part of, like, my answer is actually we have kind of done what you're suggesting with Creature Feature, for instance. So mm -hmm. um, cool. I think there's a lot of added value there, too. Um, well, I just spent a lot of money on PDFs is all I know right now. And print on demand would make my life so much happier because I prefer books because I have old man eyes and uh, the blue light <laughs> reading uh, gives me migraines. And yeah, I'm not, you know, I just want to be able to put on my stupid dollar store glasses, crawl into bed and just, hmm, yes, indeed. Hmm, <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. You know, collections, pile them like three issues to a POD, something, you know, thoughts, just thoughts. <laughs> Cody, ask a question. We're getting awkward. 
Well, uh, I don't have a question, but I wanted to make a statement about the virtual tabletop thing because I feel like regardless of what you guys do with that, I'm not a virtual tabletop guy. Regardless, I, I use it a little bit just for, you know, if, if like some, you know, if it's like a, a big combat or something, I might use it just to show people where it's at. But I've never been, a, I am a miniatures guy, but I don't like miniatures and stuff in role-playing games. Hmm. But Palladium especially, I feel works the best theater of the mind. And it seems to me that's what sh the intention was behind Palladium from the beginning. Yes. And it, it really comes out uh, of the books that it's a theater of the mind kind of game, a cinematic game. And when you start actually playing Palladium, you, I think you really get that like because it just feels very cinematic and you're just kind of rolling with it. And uh, so I just wanted to make that comment that, you know, if you're looking for a very, you know, it's it's not that kind of game, right? Like it's a very theater of the mind kind of game, which I think is a positive thing because it really shows and it really plays very well that way, better than a lot of other uh, role play games do. So yeah, I, I so I'll make a comment there. Um, you know, one of the things that people were blown away with was when um, I was working on Savage Rifts. Uh, we did an interview, Kevin and I did, and and we were like, "Hey, Kev, what do you, you know? What are you about doing these?" color pawns and doing a VTT support for, for Savage Rifts. And Kevin's like, cool, you know, and uh, a lot of people were really blown away. And uh, I think that the the Pinnacle, um, the Sigil, I should say, team um, did a really great job um, working on the Rifts for Savage Worlds virtual tabletop support. I really like Foundry. I think it's beautiful in Foundry. I think they do. I, I find that the easiest to use, but I like Roll20 as well. Um, the funny thing is, is I, and you can go online. I've got, uh, act live actual plays I've done on Foundry VTT, um, for Savage Rifts. Um, and you can check it out. Um, but the funny thing is when I run Palladium Rifts, all I needed was discord. Yeah. A dice yeah. roller app, you know? And so, um, because it is designed and built for theater of the mind. Now, one, that's one of the things we are doing with the Redux edition of the, TMNT is we were putting in some clear like movement rules and sure. uh, you know um, and 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 you know people have asked for that and wanted that and so um, you know I think that's good to add and to because there are other people that like to play different ways right yep. um, and so we want to support that at a base level to make sure that people can game the way they want to and especially sure. you know if they want to use those beautiful turtle minis that are coming so um, but uh, but yeah, it, it, it is interesting, and part of it is, I think, you know, part of it is too is that it is, uh, especially right now, it, it supports the, the, the Palladium system primarily supports, you know, um, theater of the mind play, and so um, we don't see the same need um, as maybe like the Savage Worlds players that come from the Savage World side of things who are used to very tactic. That's a very tactical tabletop combat system. And, and let's face it, it takes a lot of time and money to do it right. Yep. Do it well. We don't want to do it wrong. We, right. we still have lots of books to get out and you know, we're people are waiting books. for and we're trying to get those out and done. So, you know, is it coming down the road? Ever in, you know, ever in motion is the future to quote Yoda. So, you know, you have to wait and see. So if some... Um enterprising youth was out there who was really handy with VTTs were to put together a proof of concept, you guys would at least hear them out? Or we well, we just want to work with established... This is the same okay. type of thing. If someone wanted okay. to do a licensed version, you'd need to have an established track record in the virtual table. Yeah, we, we actually space. tried a few fan-based things that, that ultimately went nowhere. Yeah, there's yeah. a reason that yeah. we 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 have that policy now. It's a pretty hard policy here. And, and that's not to try and shut out anybody who's up and coming, yeah. but you got to show what you can do first. Um, this just in, Sean Robertson cutting out people who are up and coming. News at 11. <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, we'll shout out, you know, all types of up and coming stuff. But um, if we think it's cool and we like it. And, um, but at the same time, um, yeah, we, 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 we're really careful about how we're going to use our time because our time is a resource and, and stuff like that. Clearly. Takes so Clearly. Much time. Clearly. Well, no, and there's, that's the way and, it is. And there's a difference between shouting out something that's up and coming and putting an official stamp of approval on something. That's very true. You know, too. Well, so. working again, working up contracts, coordinating it, overseeing it, quality assuring, you know, checking it. I used to work in quality assurance, um, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's not easy. 
Well, there we go. Let's get it off the awkward topics. And uh, for the last 10 minutes, let's open up the floor to questions, guys. If you have anything in the chat, go ahead and ask your questions. Of course, Super Chats will go first. But this is it. we got 10 minutes left. Now's the time to ask your questions. Get them in, please. I will say this. I absolutely love how how shrewdable um, it is. I absolutely adore that about the game. Like One of the things I've made this comment so many times, and people, one of my favorite quotes from Buckaroo Banzai is uh, when they're doing the brain surgery at the start and uh, Peter Weller says, no, 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 don't tug on that. You never know what it's connected to. And that's what I always feel like when you house rule anything in other games. It's just like, oh, if I pull on that, I'm going to unravel this other thing that's going to cause this problem. And there's a cascade failure. Now the game's broken. That doesn't feel that way with uh, the Palladium system. It feels like... So, okay, on Legion of Myth, you showed a little preview of some images and one of them was the new stat modifier table. And on there was initiative for speed. And some people are very upset about that. Some people are saying, I can't believe you think Usain Bolt should be able to go before Jackie Chan. And it's just like, uh, and as someone who's done a lot of fighting in his life, is like, you have no idea what we're talking about at this point, but I understand your theory on that. Do you guys feel some of these things that you're making as decisions may or may not alienate old school palladium fans who seem to just like palladium the way it is and don't want change well i mean there wasn't there was an edition where that was in there right i mean it's mm -hmm. so that was a popular request we were yeah. we were and the thing i way i look at it is well if you don't like it but if we if you like it it's on the table if you don't like it don't, don't use, use it. it yeah yeah <laughs> Hey, what a crazy idea. Oh my goodness gracious. Stop you. The talking. other thing is um I think that you want you do want to look on look at everything holistically as well. Um we you, if you take a look, we've we've act Kevin and I have uh well we've done a lot of discussion on initiative and making sure that language is clear. There's a lot of things that people misunderstand, um, like long range attacks, um getting getting initiative. And that's actually like long range attacks from attackers you don't know are there right or uh you know um so it's a it's another form of surprise attack right mm -hmm. or sneak mm -hmm. attack so um and clarifying the language and down that and then you know the initiative uh section in in, in the the redux edition it, it talks about the game master has a lot of leeway to decide how initiative goes down um you don't always roll right that's that kind of like that's what happens when the game master doesn't have a clear idea for a scenario um and and you know, they're, they're, look, it's it's role playing. There could be all kinds of circumstances. So um, yeah. you know, people could be sneaking or prowling. Someone could have a tracker chip on them. There's all kinds of you know, you get into story mode, and there's all types of ways you go about things. Someone just suddenly initiates violence and attacks somebody. Um, you know, does does that person gain initiative and their whole side, or does they 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 get initiative and then everyone else rolls? I mean, this is all really best handled by the game master yeah um, surprisingly right what? and that, that's that's the core plate and philosophy we're trying to make these things a little clearer yeah. but just so you know you might say you may see that stat boost on a table but then you're not also looking at the new language and um explanation for initiative there you go and so you have to realize one is actually subservient um to the other all right, well, continue my whore like ways. Legion of Myth for five dollars says, Shameless plug, if you want more Palladium, I'll be covering Mutants in Orbit for After the Bomb and Rifts today on RPG Digest. So, guys, head over and see that. And then, Weird Guy for two bucks says, Palladium does not have gunfight cover rules. Oh, I think cover during a gunfight. Do you have rules for taking cover during a gunfight? I think that's what it means. Not it. Actually, I think I have that in something, I don't remember where. The modern, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, modern. Kevin. You sounded exactly like a Palladium fan right there. That's in some book. I remember reading it once, <laughs> <laughs> I remember writing it once. Um, it might be in uh, Riff's Game Master Guide. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, again, to me, that is sort of something that the Game Master make a call. You know, it, a lot of it's just common sense. I mean, if you're standing out in an Plus open field. Hit. Or, there's no or, place to hide if there's all kinds of debris in my you know on a player says is there is there a giant boulder or rubble or you know some ruin i can jump behind it's like yeah, yeah. and i just kind of take it into you know consideration as the game master that you know maybe when he pops his head out to shoot we see him but 
I've been trying to find a meme that I wanted to share that I, I found about a month or so ago. I can't find it. I'm giving up. Where it's basically just this picture of like Escher like human with like very same head, but it's like a twisted up human. And it says the elders of Palladium when Kevin makes a ruling and they try and decipher it. And it was really funny to me because I'm like, yeah, I've watched that fight happen now that I'm getting into Palladium. I've seen these arguments where everyone just Kevin says this and everybody goes, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, wow. Guys. Well, but if you say, if you take something like, you know, if Kevin had thrown out a number in that discussion, and then people are like, "Oh, I need to write this into the Bible of yeah. Palladium frequently answered questions," you know, and then it, it you know, it, but it was, it, it, you know, the, the real answer wasn't that it's a minus six for medium cover or whatever. The real yeah. answer is the game master's there to decide these things in a cinematic system, um, and that's again, we understand that. I don't think you got these questions thirty years ago. Not really, no. So it's you know a lot of the, this is a lot of this is about the changing expectations in games, um, and it's get you know you're getting much more tactical um, yeah. there. And so um, can we you know that maybe that's something I'll throw into the Turtles Redux edition. I don't know, but we'll see. But uh, but you know we we like to clarify the simple things when we can and give you a good rule of thumb. But again, we don't want anything to be just taken as like some Bible verse, and you can't yeah. do what's right for the yeah. the story in your game. There you go. All right, Brian, give us some of the questions that have been building up. All right. So uh, obviously you guys are going to be at Gen Con this year. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody was asking about Palladium Con, which is the open house. I know it's been at least a couple of years since the last one. Is that coming up soon? -ish? We haven't really Maybe? discussed. We haven't really discussed it. You know, yeah. there's so much going on. You know, I mean, COVID happened and other stuff's going on. We're trying to catch up with so many books. You know, that, that event actually takes a lot of time. Yeah, I know you only do it every few years, so I just wasn't sure if it yeah, yeah between two yet. or four years generally, and then we're just so caught up in well, we're we're focused cool on you know um, to getting cool stuff out. Uh, Wayne is is recovering from yep. his surgery, um, and then uh, we have two new hires um, that we talked about in the weekly updates recently. So Caleb Nelson, my younger brother, is going to be joining us in the warehouse, and uh, he's a, he's also besides being you know very experienced with warehouse and shipping work. Um, he worked for years for FedEx. Um, he's also, you know, just a tech savvy guy and he can do a lot of things that, that, uh, you know, updating things in the store and helping to take some things off of uh, the, the high level administrative plate. Um, and then uh, we also um, have hired Chris Landauer as our uh, marketing and social media and crowdfunding manager. Um, but also he does events, right? um as as that marketing yep. social media social outreach kind of stuff so um you know things like that in the future maybe we're probably I mean, the, the whole plan is that we primarily planned by by him um okay. but you know we're, we you you know i don't know if you if anyone's if you've ever you know manage something and hire people but you got to train them and you got to get your feet under you and there's a lot of things we're trying yeah. to um to get rolling and going and and that then books are our priority right books are our priority um if you know if i had the choice between uh an open house and, and getting another rifter out I, i'd choose a rifter myself so you know um but we you know we got to make those decisions are all interesting to make right so we don't have any specific plans for the next uh palladium open house palladium con or whatever there we go walter mc made it and uh, he sent it over to me to uh, pop up for you guys the grand council of palladium gms debating which interpretation of kevin's rules is the correct one and then <laughs> back in the parliamentarian fight. <coughs> well i would love to see more rifters but i could also fly to detroit i'm just saying so you know that's the thing if you if you're ever in in the area or you know give us a call make sure we're in the office you know kevin isn't uh you know off at, at, at uh, the chiropractors or I'm not, you know, running to get some groceries or something, but yeah. Um, fans are welcome to, to come by. Weird guy says for five bucks, TMNT, I expect vehicles modif weapon modification now in includes the infamous manholes that like the 1980s toy van could do. I don't know. I need to make sure I add that. <laughs> <laughs> How did I miss that one? Um, real, real quick. Uh, one question about Land Chris Landauer. So did yeah. you guys steal him from Pol uh, Pinnacle, or is he just working with both now? Do you have joint oh. custody? Yeah, it's, it's, it's joint, joint custody. custody. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's both. He's not taking on any other clients, um, so Got he it. is fully engaged. If that makes sense, but uh, but yeah, um, yeah, we're we, we're we're really happy to have him on on board, and uh, and also to share him with our friends at, at Pinnacle. Got it. Yeah, yeah I, was, right. I was like getting that 
get it getting or, or pulling him away i'm like wow that's 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 pretty big moves for palladium so i was kind of excited to hear that so well definitely. i've been working with chris for a long time and, and kevin has as well now right so um and uh you know we're he's got a lot to bring to the table yep. he's the other thing is you have to understand he's actively doing this very successfully for another company that's running a bajillion crowdfunders right and doing a really great social media outreach um he has a lot of experience and uh so <clears throat> he really punches above his weight um when it comes to this stuff and he proved himself extremely reliable um oh, yeah. just because i mean I, before i worked with him as a peer <clears throat> right um when i was working uh and with my work with 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 pinnacle um as uh still the line editor of, of rifts or savage worlds um but um with having him on board uh and having him report to us we were extremely impressed with uh, his yeah. professionalism and the 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 what he could bring to the table um yeah he's the real deal yeah so um we're very excited to be working with him all right last words from kevin and sean what would you like to leave us with as your parting statements gentlemen oh gosh yeah, yeah, you better get some provision, man. Come on. Buy palladium. Give you Buy palladium. palladium. Our products. <laughs> Buy palladium because the precious metals is the market to be in. Um, so <laughs> Buy palladium books too, though, because it helps them. Uh, <laughs> but anything, you guys, anything you want to promote, anything you want us to just say, hey, keep an eye out for, or hey, go do this, or anything, anything, anything at all. Kevin is working on Yin Sloth Expeditions. Yep. Yep. Right. That, that, so that'll, that'll be the next book that comes out. And meanwhile, uh, Matthew Clements and Sean are busy working on... Uh, Rift's Bestiary 2. Uh -huh. So those are the big ones coming up. And then we've got ideas for all kinds of stuff. And we got a bunch of little secret things that are in the works. Yeah. <clears throat> and the Turtles Redux edition is coming along really well. Um, yeah. You know, I've kind of left Wayne and Chris to finish up the Pledge Manager. Oh, um, yeah. That should be launching. So that, that you know, soon. we wanted to have that towards the end of last month, beginning of this month. Yeah. Uh, it's taking a little bit of extra time, but I think the fans are going to be really happy. We're getting really accurate, yeah. Yeah. Um, as can be, projections for, for the shipping. shipping, which is very complicated. Um, it is. <laughs> I think and, it's and unpredictable. A lot of people don't understand how just even this yeah. the EU. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, what a spaghetti bowl of... of uh, <laughs> so... Um, so please do have respect for that. Um, but uh, but yeah, that the funny thing is, is you know, I don't want anybody to think that because the pledge manager is a couple of weeks behind that, you know, production isn't just sailing along for the Redux edition. That's going great. Yeah, uh, we're sure having is. a great time. The art looks fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I met you know I met Jim Lawson for the first time. And of course, we've been emailing with Jim and, yeah. and Dan Berger and Steve Levine and um they're all real nice. We met him in person. It was just freaking awesome. And, um, I, I showed him the color work, um, yeah. that, uh, Luis Antonio Delgado, um, did on his, his black and white art. And he was just beaming. He was, yeah. he loved it. And that was just a, such a great feeling, yeah. right? That the original artist loves the color work. Um, and I mean, Luis is great. <laughs> Everybody's going to get their socks blown off when they see the books. Um, the stuff that he and Mike Majestic have done for the Redux edition is amazing, oh, yeah. but um, <clears throat> that that's that's really fun. Uh, we're we're looking forward to showing off some. We just got a bunch of stuff approved for the miniatures. Yeah. The turtles look fantastic. Shredder, the the Foot Clan, um, the all the all the Mirage guys were just like, wow, those are really amazing miniature sculpts. So um, we're we're really excited about showing a lot of that off very soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the, the production on that is going great. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. We're just having a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And we got, um, a lot of great people joining the team right now. Um, and you know, I, I know some people are like, oh, you, you, you say you, you need some more help and just hire somebody. Well, we don't want to hire somebody that isn't going to be a fit for the long run yeah. for at least a couple of, uh, you know, a number of years. Yeah. Right. And, uh, if, if, you know. I, I I take hiring and firing very seriously. I mean, that's someone's yeah. livelihood, right? Yep. And there a lot of meaning attached to a lot of people's lives. So we want to make sure that we're making the right moves, um, not you know, not yeah, the short term yep. um, knee jerk reaction moves. Yep. Um, so, anyways, um, that's I think that's what we got to leave. I mean, if you uh, keep your eyes uh, out, we should be seeing the 
the pledge manager and pre-order store open up really soon for the TMNT Redux edition. Um, make sure you can get in there. You'll have a, um, really great estimates for shipping. Of course, that can vary. It could go up or down because three, four months from now, right? I mean, this is scheduled to be uh, listed to be going out in September. So, I mean, a lot of things can change between now and then. I'm not going to talk about politics or the Middle East, um, but that's not the other. That's all. But that's all comes into the logistics of global shipping, right? The Suez Canal and all that jazz. So, um, but uh, but yeah, we're we're, we're uh, we've got really great stuff coming. Um, uh, one of the things with the pre-order store, yes, you won't be. No, you won't. No, if you didn't back the Kickstarter for at least a dollar, you won't be able to upgrade a pledge or create a new pledge. But you will be able to get the material at the Kickstarter price. Ooh, um, nice. before it hits uh, the shelves. So, and we have uh, a lot of retailers who have yeah. jumped in on the Kickstarter, and we have a really cool retailer bundle in the pre-order store as yeah. well. So, yeah. anybody who knows their, you know, local game store owner or something like that, you will have to verify your status as a brick and mortar shop. Um, but uh, um, yeah, there's going to be some some great stuff in the pre-order store for them as well, um, because mm -hmm. we've had a really great reaction on that. So beautiful. On that. Real Cody, no, Brian, we're done questions. We're no, it's, done. It's, it's, it's real. No, it's real quick. No, it Brian. Okay. Brian, listen to me. No, the show is <laughs> over. It's been two hours and five minutes. We have to let these men get onto their life. Or the book if it's a follow-up to that, we, I can answer it. Go ahead, Brian. Go ahead. It was just it, because it's come up a couple of times in the chat. What is the probability of Antarctica this year? I was trying to avoid that. <laughs> no, if, if you oh, want no, to no, say that, so, so no, that's a that's a fine question. No, yeah. we've already talked about it. We've already announced it, right? Yeah. Um, a very high probability yeah. this year. Okay, so, great. I mean, I we you know we can't foresee the future and anything that could happen. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, the Yen Sloth expeditions. Um, I mean, that's one of the big things with all these hires too is take all this these tasks off of Kevin's plate. So Kevin can focus on writing and he's been so happy. We were doing writing and he was doing art and stuff the other Friday. And we were just like, we both were like, oh, it's great. He's got to write today. He's got to do art today. So um, that's the more we can do that. That's my number one goal, right? And that's the number one goal with, with that Chris's number one goal. That's that's Caleb's number one goal, right? Is whether they're taking stuff directly off of Kevin's plate or they're taking other stuff off of my plate or Wayne's plate so that, that we can then take other things off of Kevin's plate. That's the whole point. Um, because we want Kevin to write those books that only Kevin can write. So um, after Yinsloth Expeditions, that's that's uh, the next big release yep. is, uh, is 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 uh, Antarctica. Antarctica. Now from him, you I'm, know, um, you know, his, <laughs> he's already finished up his uh, his work on Bestiary too. Yeah. So I'm totally understandable. And for those who think I'm being mean to Brian, Brian's the dad. I'm the father. Understand? <laughs> <laughs> Brian makes tank top jokes. I go, can we please get back on point? Uh, Cody, any final words you want to say before we wrap this up? Uh, just that, you know, if you haven't gave Palladium a try or haven't given it a try in a long time, I think now's the best time to jump back into it. And I would definitely recommend it if you want a very robust but very fun and thematic great rules for role-playing games like Palladium's got it all. And I would highly recommend it. I I'm having a blast getting back into Palladium again. And uh, I think most people would too. And so definitely support these guys. They're awesome. They make great stuff. Go check it out. There you go. Brian, any final words, sir? Final words. Everybody, if you are watching, go subscribe to GM Cody. Go subscribe to Bear. Why? Because they each run a Palladium fantasy game. Uh, Cody, uh, I, this is just a fun story that I think Kevin and Sean will like. Um, so we've all been kind of diving into all the Palladium stuff. And Cody reaches out to me and he says, you're playing in my fantasy game. Yep. He didn't say, would you like to? Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. It was, you're playing. Oh, okay. And then we start trying to put the party together. Brian, you're playing a wizard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so and, and clearly I was not behind the scenes poking Cody in those directions at all. This was never, all would never Cody. Do that. I so, never would have done that. <laughs> so everybody, do go subscribe to Cody. Number one, because he needs more subscribers anyways. Number two, um, to come check us out while we play fantasy. And check out Bear when he plays fantasy with like eight other YouTubers, it seems like. Like they, they, there's a lot of them. Four, five, five, whatever. Anyway. A anyways, so, and also subscribe to Gaming with ADHD because I promise at some point I will run an absolutely horrible Ninjas and Super Spies game because I'm bad at everything I do. But um, 
there is a lot of love for Palladium. Guys, thank you so much for being here. It was an absolute blast to talk to you again. You and got then, it. Anytime. Coming up on two hours, <laughs> 20 minutes of your lives that you're never getting back. Uh, I just want to say thanks for being on the show, guys. Thanks for making great games. Thanks for promoting great attitudes in gaming. Thanks for building a community that actually is a community and thank you for supporting everyone thank you for supporting youtubers like us because you really do help make our job a lot easier trust me some interviews you're pulling teeth you want to you, if you've got a channel you can get them on get sean on just ask him a question then turn on the watch and watch him go because sean <laughs> <can talk. laughs> but anyway thank you everybody who showed up thank, thank you for you. the super chats thank you for hanging out thank you kevin and sean for being here brian and cody for co-hosting peace love geek and we will see you Real soon.